Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Welcome to Guy Light, a podcast about vampires. What is this movie called? <laughs> okay, well, f- the first thing that I noticed when I Googled this after I watched it is it, this, it's no longer called Twilight. It's called The Twilight Saga, ah. New Moon. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was. I really appreciated Amazon for putting a little number two. Me too. Uh, yeah, because really I was made like, it easier. Because they all have like moon. Like, is the next <laughs> one eclipse? <laughs> it's all moons and like you yeah. know. There's some somewhere between the blue and red color continuum. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know that's kind of all there is uh, to distinguish one from the like every cover box is the same too. You're like, you know. Yes. Uh, uh, and we're going to have a good uh, podcast titling for this because yeah. I think this episode would just be Guy Light, uh, New Moon. Yeah. <laughs> the first one is Guy Light. The second one is Guy Light, New Moon. Then Guy I, Light Eclipse and so on and so forth. I think the Guy Light Saga is, is really uh, a fetching title for this, <laughs> <laughs> for, for this podcast. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe they had the gall to call this the Twilight Saga. I just, it's just like, wow. What constitutes uh, as a saga? Is a saga I, a specific amount of things? I think saga is not a title you can bestow on yourself. I yeah. think that's a thing someone else has to give you. You know, like general. <laughs> right. Like you can't just be like, I am general such and such. No, I you're mean, not. I think we'd be living in a better world where people could just call themselves generals. But oh, yeah. I, Fuck yeah. General Bell? Hell yeah. That sounds great. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. I don't well, mind the word and brigad- General Ganser. <laughs> well, I was born for that, you know. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't know. So we're I generals now. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be that mad if I was a little lower, like if I was brigadier general. Cause I just think the word brigadier in a title is pretty chill. It is a it is a chill word. Yeah, it's very chill. I don't know chill what it positive. means. Oh, me neither. Uh, I don't know what any of the ranks mean. <laughs> like I know the four ranks from Call of Duty, and then beyond that, I don't know anything. Right. Yeah. By the way, I saw your I saw your knife work. Uh, a couple was it last night? I don't remember. A oh yeah, ago? I know how to knife. Oh, you are a, you're a fucking wizard, Harry, with the knife. Thank you. Well, yeah. I, I've said this before. Uh, it's it's sort of a tragedy. Call of Duty is one of the games I'm very good at. <laughs> uh, not not amazing. I'm not like a champion. I, I I'm I'm probably above average at. Uh, I mean, but that's a lot. That's but when you think about that, above average with the pool of players that exists for that game, mm-hmm. it's like that's that's a yeah, crazy yeah. talent to just be laying on your shelf. I'm proud of myself. Yeah, you should be. Yeah, sure. I have. You sure. know, there's few things I'm above average at. I've One is throwing, using throwing once. knives in Call of Duty. <laughs> It really does feel like a like a Harry Potter trick, the yeah. way that you're able to headshot well, it with those knives. I'm keeping this all in. Uh, there's there's everybody's playing Call of Duty wrong, but me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just I've said it before. I have heard you I'll say, say it, it again. Sure, that's my stance. Is that if you play the game using only throwing knives, it becomes an entirely new and much better game. Right. It's like it's sort of like ninjas. It's like a, it's a game about ninjas in a war zone, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean that that does sound appealing. It also sounds like what Assassin's Creed should be. Yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like you're using troll logic here, right? Which is like, everyone has to do what I do, and then well, it would okay. be good. And I don't think it would. I disagree with that. Here's the paradox, Adam. If everybody was playing the way I was playing, then I wouldn't be special. And it wouldn't be as fun, because the fun of it is, they're all, they're all look, my hand is low, and I'm saying, <laughs> they're all playing down here. Right, now right, I'm right. going to put my hand higher and say, and yeah. I'm playing up here. Right. Uh, you're, you know, you're raising so, the bar. Yeah, the the beauty of playing Call of Duty is that if you play in a in a really like different and weird way, it really throws off everybody else. I agree. So that's yeah. the, that's the genius of it. Uh, totally obvious ploy there. I just yeah. worry, Dave, that one day you're going to get your wish, 
and you're going to be like Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Like, you're going to look well, on the world you have created and be like, there, yes, it was saved, but not for me. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. <laughs> and and I what don't know, ship right will now, you take? There's nothing more delightful than playing a match with a riot shield and throwing knives. I and love you, watching you it. Kill, once you kill enough people, some genius joins in with their yeah. own riot shield and throwing yeah. knife, and they're like, oh, okay. I guess this is the game we're playing. Sure. I can play that game too. Everybody, and then it becomes a, a, an act of love. I, I think I think everyone has like uh, some area in life that they have deep insight into that all we're waiting for is someone else to see it. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't mind me briefly taking it aside, Dave, uh, to start sure. the podcast, I will tell you about the day that my brother and I, in the year two thousand, went to see a live ro- uh, wrestling event. Uh, it was right after WrestleMania when The Rock had lost Triple H. It was terrible. And uh, Vince McMahon came, comes out, right, to start the show. And this uh-huh. is like, this is in Anaheim or whatever. And he steps out, and his first line, Dave, is, I'm a billionaire. <laughs> oh. the, the crowd's booing. It's wonderful. And then he says, The next line was, For most of you, life sucks and then you die. Uh, he did it in perfect Vince fashion where he held on to the word die. Yeah, yeah. And so everyone's booing, but my brother and I were cheering. We were cheering for Vince because we understood what was good and true. And Uh like seven children, Dave, turned their heads and looked back at us like, what are you doing? Like there was legit like confusion and then sadness. And they looked back at us and then they realized in that glorious moment, the scales fell from their eyes, Dave, and they realized, holy shit, wrestling is funny. And I didn't know it was funny until all this time. Right. And by the end, the entire section was cheering for Vince McMahon, and he was confused. <laughs> you know yep. what I mean? Like, that, that was our knife and shield attack. We did it, Dave. You did it. I mean, Vince, uh, what if in 100 years from now, Vince McMahon is the only person remembered from this era? <laughs> I don't know what it would take for that to be true. I don't but know. But it's, it's not a 0% chance that happens. It's not a zero. He could be like a Tesla type or more like an Edison uh, where they're like, you know, he was a monster, right? You know, it would be a real like, oh, did you know Vince McMahon, that historical figure, was also a monster? And it would be like a little known <laughs> fact about historical figure. You have Alexander Graham Bell. You got Tesla. Right, right. You got Edison. Yeah. You got McMahon. Yeah. You got Einstein. Yep. It'll just be all there. I just wonder like, what society it would take for them to have to be told he was not a good man from watching the clips. I, like, I just, right. like, just watching him walk, you know, he's evil. Look at his swagger. There's too much, too much evil in that swagger. You know? Yeah. I don't know. That's a lot of alien evil. I don't understand it. Welcome to Guy Light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess welcome to this uh, Guy Light, the Guy Light saga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm one of your hosts, David Bell. And I'm one of your other hosts, Adam Ganser. And uh, I, I mean, again, I'm not cutting any of this out. No, so I, like, I, I, yeah. Who knows? Who knows what we're going to do? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, no, <laughs> no. It's part. Of, it's part. Yeah. It's part of the fun. It's going to be this. This podcast is uh, targeted to be about an hour and about three hours from now. We'll see what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck knows? We'll see where we go. We'll see where we go yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't we don't cut any rabbit trails. It occurred to me. Yeah. And I tweeted this. The last episode I believe is longer than the movie Twilight, <laughs> at least by a few minutes. Did we actually pull that off? I think so. I'm pretty sure we went longer than the actual movie we were talking about. We could have talked for a good 20 minutes about the fact that that movie had to have been shot before Obama was president. And just like what an alien artifact that moment is. That is weird to think about. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, what? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Can't even believe that it came out of that world. That's so, man. It's a pre-Obama. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. it's what's well, right in the shit. It's right in the middle of the shit, right? Like it's right in the middle of the down. shit. Yeah. It's what the world needed right there and then. They really did. Um, but this this week, we're on uh, Twilight New Moon, right? Yeah, we are. Yes. The sequel to yes. Twilight. I don't even... Uh, yeah. It's. I mean, it's definitely a sequel. I think you could call it sort of uh, also just a repeat of Twilight, like a reboot. Would, uh, yeah. It was right? like, all right, it is sort of like, well, yes and no, yeah. Because it does feel like the first Twilight, they're like, damn, we forgot the werewolves. Okay, let's put the no werewolves in. Fucking let's kidding. do it again with the werewolves. Yes. Uh, but there's a new, I mean, Edward's har- hardly in it. 
I, uh, I I wrote down what do we think he did during the movie. Uh, I, we could save that for later. <laughs> save that question for later. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. In it, we basically find that uh, the beginnings of Team Jacob and Team Edward start to form. Right, this is when we start to get opinions about who Bella yes. was supposed to like. It feels like there's no way this can't end in a threesome. It should. It's yeah, it, it, in like, a like a. And uh, like a a, uh, a cathartic threesome. I mean, exactly. I don't know. I there was a line in the movie where she says to Jacob, "You're like your own son," and I'm like, "No, no, no. you you need to get, put that hand down by those loins when he gets around Edward, because mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's where you're getting some real <laughs> some real fusion. That's where right. it's happening. There's a lot of tension. Oh my God, so much. A lot of heat. Yeah. A lot of heat in the air. Yeah, very much so. You can see the yeah. wavy lines. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is all right. The plot of this is that Edward totally dumps her on her birthday or a day <laughs> after her birthday because she's not because he's an old pervert and she's eighteen now. Right. And he's not interested. Right. Uh, everyone everyone he says gets he, her presents, but like just the town is obsessed with her. The gift giving was just, grim too. It, it really was. It was. There was so many. She gifts. was. She was so depressed to be getting. She's the only teenager who was bummed to be 18 no kidding yeah and it's like mother you're fucking 18 this is the top of the world you've reached the top of the world right Um, this is the this is the youngest you'll ever be an adult and the best your body will work yeah so it's not even like it's not it's all downhill from here you're on the top of the world you got like a few more years and then it's downhill right you're cresting right now this is yeah, exactly. This is, and she's so fucking bummed. She doesn't say thank you for any of the gifts. Everybody's she, weird about it. Everybody keeps like telling her what gifts they gave her. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, she's uh, just like, Meh. and then some guy lusts for her blood and throws her against the wall. It's a bummer birthday. It's not a great birthday. Uh, I'm trying to figure out like <laughs> what our lasting impression is supposed to be of that particular vampire. Because he says it's Jasper, right? That's his name. So like they looks like a Jasper. Uh, Jasper is a perfect fucking name for that guy. Yeah. So like when we see him for the first time in this movie, he's doing blue steel. <laughs> like he's legit doing yes, blue steel right is. at her. And then they're like nice mood control, which I assume is either saying good job on not trying to kill her for her blood or that he was magicking her in some way. It was really unclear what they I meant by that. I think he's trying not to he's just really trying not to murder her, I guess. He's really having a problem. I, I totally agree. Uh I totally mean, agree. as it, as it becomes clear. There's a few things that become become clear in this um, opening. Great. I'm um, excited. One is they spent more money on makeup and songs. Yeah. Th- like th- this, I was going to say the most more money. The most notable thing that became clear is the realization that Michael Sheen is in Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> also, Dakota Fanning. Also, Dakota yes. Fanning's in Twilight. Yes. I couldn't believe either I mean, of Dakota those facts. Fanning, Dakota Fanning, I can sort of understand. I don't know. Michael Sheen had this. Did you, you remember he's in Tron Legacy as well? He's also in Underworld. Yeah, he had this stage where they're like, you're going to play like pale vampire types, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is so weird. Yeah, he was, a, he was a lichen in Underworld, which is, a, yeah. you know, he really range, a lot of range here he's showing. He doesn't, yeah, that's true. He doesn't strike me as the type now, later in his career. Mm, fuck no. But no it's way. such a weird way they started him out. Like, when you think about his roles, you kind of have to tip your hat to the guy because like... He's played all that stuff. Then he's played. What was the name of the show that he was on, that he had? That was uh, it was the the Ken, the Kaminsky. I don't remember the name of it. It was the the Masters of Sex, right? Isn't that the show? I don't know, man. I just remember. I mean, him from Apostle. Yes, Masters of Sex. Yeah, Masters of Sex. Apostle. He's killing it. I always forget mm-hmm. he's in Frost Nixon. I always forget yeah. his career has been. He's been around for a while. Very long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's he, had a long career. Yeah, killing it in Good Omens. He has a great little cameo, like maybe like a five or six episode cameo on Thirty Rock, where he's like Liz, like Liz has to settle for him. Like that's the right. That's he's the, plot. the he's the the boyfriend, the British one, the settling boyfriend. Yeah, it's yeah, perfect. yeah, yeah. That might have been where I first saw him. I'm not even certain about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this whole time, who would have thought he's in the Twilights, and not just one Twilight. He's in all of it from here on. <laughs> That's in- incredible that we need to see more because I yeah, don't feel like we ever need to go back to those guys. 
Uh, oh, but we will. I know. <laughs> I mean, of course we, we will. will. Of course we will. But see, but wait. So just briefly, and by the way, we're in the highlight section where we're describing the plot. Oh, right. We have sections. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is what we get for not being that thorough about it when we started, is trying uh-huh. to fucking remember the names for it. So Highlight. Uh, where Welcome we're, to Highlight. <laughs> where we're describing the, the plot to cue you. Cue the highlight sound. Can, like, can I describe my sorrow to you, just to jump all the way to the end, that the movie definitely took a moment to introduce Dakota Fanning, but then Michael Sheen <laughs> it's, is just like, uh, or Martin Sheen, excuse me, Martin Sheen. No, it's, it's Michael Sheen. It is Michael Sheen, right. What the fuck? Yeah, Michael Sheen. Isn't Martin Sheen um, is the president now. Yeah, the president from uh, yeah. West Wing. Different Sheen. So Michael Sheen. It's, I get him confused too. It's it's. I don't like it. I think they should have a. I think they should get together and figure that out. There should be. They should have a Highlander battle for the last name Sheen, and Charlie Sheen should get thrown in there too. Just like one guy yeah, should emerge from that. Well, from no. That if you do that, then like you give it to the Sheen, the Sheen family. No, I don't uh, think so. Right? I, I think we only need one out of those three guys. Yeah, Amelia knew. Amelia was like... He, he, yes. Uh, oh, wait. Well, okay. Technically, Estevez is their actual last name. So Amelia, they were like, we're going to be Sheens. And Amelia was like, I'm cool over here in Estevez town. Right. Quack, 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 uh, Mr. Ducksworth. You know? Like, uh-huh. He's, he's, he knows where he lands, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I like Emilio Estevez. I don't mind if Emilio Estevez partners up with the survivor of that battle royale and they make some kind of a brother movie. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Even if it's Martin Sheen. <laughs> I approve it as well. Yeah. Okay, briefly. I approve this. Just to finish my point before we get way the fuck off track. Okay. So I, it made me sad <laughs> that they, the movie took a moment with Dakota Fanning getting introduced. And then Michael Sheen, they're just like, and then here's this guy. And I'm like, oh my God, like just flip those, please. Flip those in terms of importance because Michael Sheen matters right. way more. And then more. that guy starts fighting Edward, right? Right. Some other guy, right? Some other guy yeah. fights Edward. This, but- by the way, did you notice the uh, clever, you know, foreshadowing with Romeo and Juliet? Adam, oh did my you see God. what they did there? I wrote it, dude. I wrote did it you down. See? At three minutes and 15 seconds, I wrote it down. Romeo and Juliet placed perfectly on her pillow because when I fall asleep, it's definitely just laying next to me on my pillow. It's not like wrapped in my body with the sheets somewhere like a tornado right. of destruction. Well, then right? they're watching it in class, too. And Edward's, <laughs> right. like, Edward's like, you know, I could go for a suicide. <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, gee, I wonder if any of this matters. I wonder it's, if this is going to be relevant. The first thing I wrote down in my notes was, this movie is the least subtle movie ever. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the first thing I wrote down. Because it's horrible. Uh, yeah. No artistry in terms of the writing at all. I like, love his method. Because he, they, have, they have a suicide council, is what he tells her at the beginning. Uh, led by Mar- uh, Michael Sheen. Which is that you go to them and you're like, I want to die. And oh, is, they'll is be that like, what that was? Oh, that I wasn't think, clear to me. Yeah, and that was then not because clear you, to me. Uh, being a vampire, it's tough. He says he envies Romeo, right? Or Juliet. And he says, like, you humans have so many ways to die. This is what he's saying to his right, he, girlfriend yes, in it, high school. It was very dark. Also, I think we should have known that it was going to go dark because just his intro... Like, his intro alone, when he walks out of the car the first time, yeah. it's like he's wearing black. He looks like, a, he looks like living smoke. And yeah. as he, he walks out, it yeah. does, he looks like the fucking emperor. He looks like a young emperor. <laughs> like, yeah. He looks like a sexy emperor. You know, sexy Sheev. That's what he looks like he, with the chicken eyes and everything. It's ridiculous. He is. He's, he's young Sheev. Yeah, he's a young, That's sexy Sheev. That's 100% Sheev. what he is. Yeah. Right. Like, which, by the way, young, sexy Star okay. Wars? Yes, please. Where's our young Palpatine movie Ooh. starring Robert Pattinson, Ooh. folks? When he, when he was just slaying it as, a, as an admin boy in the Senate? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, just, he's making deals behind the scenes. He's writing up contracts and stuff, and he's sleeping with oh, Twi'leks yeah. or whatever. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's definitely doing that. That's what I want. Yeah. He's, he's slept his way to the top. Yeah, I want to see him just boning his way around the galaxy. Yep. Um, but Edward says he's 109, so now we know just what kind of an old pervert he is. <laughs> yes, we got an exact uh, number. Yeah. Uh, Bella says, maybe I shouldn't be dating such an old man. And I was like, yes! They, you right. got it! You got it! That's one of Twilight's Stay on tricks. <laughs> Stay on target. Stay on target. Yeah. That's one, of, that's one of Twilight's tricks, right? Is like they think that they're going to hang a lantern on every problem. Like, where they're just like, okay, if there's a problem, like an obvious yeah, objection to this, they'll just say it, and then you won't yeah. think it's a problem anymore, which is like, no, 
You no, just, it's still a problem. Yeah, it's still a problem. Uh, it's still weird. The fact that they're aware of it makes it more of a problem. <laughs> right. It's like you didn't try to fix it, so you're not lovable yeah. losers. You're the people who left this in here. Right. If I stabbed someone and said, gee, you know, this is probably bad to stab someone, I still stab them. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less uh, egregious. Right. Just because you put a I'd, shucks in front of it didn't make it home, yeah. like make it cute, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I it, I could not believe the Romeo and Juliet placement. It was so atrociously done. Like, like even if they just opened and spread the book, like she set it down on the pillow, so it wasn't so obvious. Right. It would have felt more or just don't real. Do it. Right. Agreed. Totally. Why do because it? Because they're calling their shots. Because basically, this is a uh, to describe this plot. Because we haven't really. <laughs> um, it's basically Romeo and Juliet. If the writer wussed out. I guess of so. The ending of the tragic ending. I guess so. Bella, I feel like uh, I, I feel like with Romeo and Juliet, they're they're dumbing down who this is for. Like the first Twilight, I would have said, okay, this is for like you know preteens and maybe like maybe like young adults. By putting Romeo and Juliet in there, like we're making it for young like kids, right? Am I wrong? I don't know. I loved it. I enjoyed every second of this film, Adam. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's because of your your wide, delicious palate. You know what I mean? Like, sure, <laughs> sure. Like I like that. Everybody always says my palate's delicious. Everyone that sampled that palate has said, "My God, the mm. man is a the man's a trove of taste." Yeah. Uh, I I, it's, I didn't hate it because there's fun things about it, but it's not for yeah, fun, me. Dumb stuff. Yeah, I did. Okay, I legitimately enjoyed the vampire fight at the end. Yeah, uh, sure, okay. Where there are two vampires backyard wrestling in a cathedral. Uh, it was I enjoyed that. Better than the first one. Yes. Like, in terms of vampire fights. Like you said, they got more of a budget. I, so, I... Uh, okay, I don't want to get into Twilight yet. I still think we should deserve to recap the movie just okay. a little bit. Okay. So, Edward breaks up with Bella because he doesn't want... She's just like, come on, make me a vampire. I'm already 18, and right. he's like, it, you'll go to hell. Could you stop? And, like, they both have a point well, to me. I, I, do they? Like, is there hell in if this I'm, world? If I'm, well, that's the thing. is If I'm a vampire and I think I've damned myself by doing this, I wouldn't make other people vampires. Yes. And I would, like, I if, if you're a human and then something happens to you that makes you want nothing more than to murder humans and drink their blood... I would assume there's some sort of evil at work because it's you'd like think, magic. You'd think, right. Yeah. You'd think. So I I get it. But she's just like, come on, man. We're in a relationship. I'm 18. I don't understand that I have my whole life ahead of me yet. Every de- de- decision seems like a big decision. She's not actually aware of that. But you know what? It, it, like when I was 18, I would I would become a vampire immediately. Sure. But, if someone offered it to but me. But like, I feel like even you at 18 would have had some pause at the idea that, like, oh, no, your soul is damned and there's evidence for that. You know but what I mean? there's no evidence, technically. Well, the magic. It, it, as yeah, you just yeah, said, no, it implies think, there's a larger magic universe, right? Yes, but then, all right, I think this movie raises a very profound question. Uh, thank you, Dave. Adam, um, thank you. Because they're vegetarian vampires. They are moral. Mm-hmm, they are mm-hmm. trying to be moral. So the question is, does is it your actions that decide whether you're evil or not or what you are and bella thinks like no you're not automatically evil because you're a vampire right she's definitely what we're all supposed to think her her point of view is what we're supposed to think about it uh but it's not a very well thought through point of view uh yeah i mean she's 18 he's 109 so he has more perspective the problem right the problem is though that when you have an 18 year old who's the protagonist who's like addressing those problems then they stay problems in the movie because we get to because we think the same way you just did, which is like, boy, she really isn't thinking this decision through at all. No, she's very young. Right. Uh, this is again. It's. I mean, you never see any old vampires. No, the oldest. You no right. You never see a ninety-year-old as a vampire. That's correct. Because, and I think it's because if you ask someone who's older, like, would you like to be a vampire? They're like, fuck no. This I'm exhausted. I've lived like ninety years. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for the next stage of whatever this fucking journey is, and that's why they're all young and dumb people, vampires. They're all people who are like it's like 
it's like you know it's like anything else it's like getting a tattoo or, or joining the army is that it's like some i mean sometimes it works out but people do that young and they can regret it i'm just of course I, i'm just legitimately yeah. curious where he got this idea of being damned from because nobody else in his family seems to have it you know, like his like his uh, yeah. dad i'm gonna put think- his dad in quotes his dad understands that he thinks it, but he clearly doesn't think it. Otherwise, he damned four souls because they were dying of Spanish well, they influenza. Don't care. I guess, but like other vampire movies, they don't care, right? And that's right. that's part of what makes them so se- sexy and evil. That's, They're also horribly short-sighted, which is funny for someone who's going to live for this long. Right. Because the idea is like, oh, we're damned, but we won't die. And it's like, well, number one, you know, you die all the time. People drive stakes through your heart. Right. And number two, like, eventually you're just going to be floating around space. Yeah, death sparkling. is inevitable. Even <laughs> you'll be sparkling. Yeah. Uh, in this case, the sun doesn't even kill them. So then they don't get any sweet release from that. So when the earth explodes, they're just going to be floating in space. Well, uh, until the question becomes they can't even like swim. Can they, you know, can do they need air? Because could they, in theory, shoot themselves off in the blood. universe? Could they do that? Yeah, I think they need blood. Yeah, they, there you, you go. They need air in space. Like, they can't, like, if you're floating in space. They they die, right? They die from lack well, of air? Well, okay. If the Earth explodes with vampires on it, presumably it would then project them through space. Right. They'd be flying like through a, space. Like a shirt cannon of horror. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, and so that maybe they'll land somewhere that there'll be blood. Well, that's the that's the great gamble, right? That's the gamble they all have yeah. to take when civilizations finally ended. Is like, okay, now you're gonna jump off this planet in a direction and hope you're right. In a way, being a becoming a vampire is ulti- is being extremely optimistic because you're betting that society oh, yeah. will live on absolutely past the existence of the Earth. But, but, which you know, I guess all of us have to make that gamble on some level, right? If, if nah, I'm I I get to die. Right, right, right. We all right, get right. to die. Well, but they're trying to. So avoid we just that. have to bet on society working for as long as we're around. Then it's like, ah, fuck my grandkids. But see again. See ya. <laughs> Yes, that's you sounded like a boomer right there. It's like yeah, thank you. Uh, but again, so you're saying, oh, but I get to die. Well, a vampire can die. Like, like yeah, they can yeah, die. Yeah. So if the pro- if they're dumbasses, right? So the problem is that they die and go to hell. That's the problem. Right. Right. And so you have to. It's again, it's a gamble. You're like, I better not die. Like, like it's it's basically like you're immortal, but you have to like follow these certain rules. Yeah, I just think that they shouldn't have brought the idea of being of hell at all. In this, like, that's a really stupid idea to bring into this movie. I don't know. I like the question of the morality. I of, do too. Is will the Cullens go to whatever the equivalent of heaven is in the afterlife in this world because they're just good vampires, or do is vampires an automatic one way ticket to hell? Because if I mean. That's fucked up. It is fucked up. Because there's people who probably didn't ask to be vampires, who became vampires. Basically all the Collins, except for the doctor. That's their situation, right? right? So yeah. there's that. And also, look, if hell isn't at least somewhat based on morality, uh, it's not hell. And number two, the werewolves are definitely going to hell if it's based on morality, right? I mean, like, those guys are... They're, those guys the bro, are... The bro wolves? They're abusing everybody. Uh, I mean, I don't yeah, want to skip... Yeah, they got some problems. I don't want to skip we'll too far ahead, it. but yeah, they're... Yeah. There's a lot of beatings going on in that They're family. trying to, though. They made them kind of nice. It's the idea is that they can't control themselves. It's... Man, it's... It's this. It's a bad this setup. Story is about, this story is about a young woman trying to choose between a physically abusive relationship and an emotionally abusive yes, relationship. Yes, that's correct. Right? Uh, well, and they're both emotionally abusive for different reasons. Uh, and yes. they're both physically abusive for different reasons. They both keep telling her to fuck yes, off. Yes, they and do. Like, I'm afraid. I'm going to hurt you. They're and exactly it's like, the Bella, same. You need, to, you need to date the queasy guy because these guys are a fucking mess. I, I, to me, they sneak into your house yes, all the time. Yes. They climb in your window. They co- constantly talk about protecting you like you're a possession. Edward. Okay, so we haven't even gotten into the plot. But you're Team Edward right now. You're Team Edward. No, I'm Team Neither. Well, sure, but that assumes you have to pick a team. It sounds like you're Team Edward. Not necessarily. Okay, well then, fucking, let's get to it later. Then, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to worm your way out of this, Dave, but you're gonna have to pick because that's the fucking internet. I'll try to pick. Yeah, yeah, that's the internet. But so, so to sum up the plot, Edward goes away, 
Edward Edward um, once again realizes that being a vampire is dangerous to humans and decides I can't risk it. Yeah, and his family has to move because that's what we knew they were going to do. Right. That. Bella seems blindsided. No by fucking it. kidding. So he dumps her on her birthday. Uh, he says, this is the last time you'll see me. And he, he skulks off. Ever Bella again. gets so sad that she passes out in the woods. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know why that happened. Found by a werewolf uh, who, in a, yeah, in a who rainstorm, brings... doesn't bother wearing a shirt. And that's how you know something's not right. Yeah, there's a lot of things that aren't right. Because her father, they're looking for her. They right. called the police. Right. And a shirtless boy comes out of the woods <laughs> Here you go. with Found Bella her. and goes here and they just go oh thanks and then yeah. they, he just walks away and it's like I think you have some questions yeah. for that young test, man don't you test that man's dick test it to see what he's been doing with it you right. have do, to do I that mean, that's the rules him. do anything yeah it's baffling it's a shirtless man just brought your daughter from the woods <laughs> that alone just the fact that he's shirtless in a rainstorm is like just take him in for some questioning just just like yeah throw the daughter out ask, what the fuck's he here's, doing <laughs> here's here's a pitch ask a single question <laughs> they don't ask a single question they literally go oh thanks right and they take her well call off the search and then he goes bounding yeah. off on all fours and they still look at it and go huh what a helpful guy yeah. It's just like so, it's like a fucking Leslie uh, Nielsen movie. <laughs> like, what yeah, it is. What's going on here? I can't. Um, I want to backtrack a little bit sure. because before Edward ne- leaves, he tells her, "You give me everything by just breathing." Right. That's one of his romantic lines, yes. and the other one he says is, "You're my only reason to stay alive." And I was like, "Dude, this is not cool." No, no, that's he, toxic. No, he he should have been the lead singer of Sunny Day Real Estate at that exact moment. He should, yeah. like, they should have given him an emo band and said, "Just do a tour." Uh, also, yeah, when she asked him for a birthday kiss, why does he seem like it pained by? Yeah, it? I didn't understand that. Is oh, because like the blood in her mouth? I, I didn't get it. It was like, I didn't and get also, it. have they not had sex yet? That's weird. That seems like they've had sex. Um, yes. Okay, well, that brings up my first major objection to this movie. Like, I, This is like a first major objection. So it's stupid that this movie never gives us the movie where we see them together. You know what I mean? Like, we've never right. seen them together. It's like we see them struggle to be together, then they break up, and they're not together. This whole movie... And it's like, wait a minute, we need... They had a lot to cover. Yeah, but but the most important thing in the series is knowing whether we believe they should be together or not. And you don't right, know that we, until you've seen it, and we haven't seen it. I, I think the writers just didn't know how to write chemistry. Well, it definitely assumes it. Maybe they became self-aware that it was really creepy to like dwell on just two teenagers fucking. Uh, it's just they were like, okay, you get it. They dated now the, now he's leaving. Right, but it, it's such an opportunity to do the first movie where they get together. It's such an opportunity to have a great second movie where they are together and the challenge is being together. You know what I mean? Like, that's such an interesting movie for a, a young adult romance series. Right. Because it's like, yeah, what's dating yeah, like for a teenager? Of, I, I'm dating a vampire. I'm dating a vampire. Also, like, we have to learn how to love each other. That's not just a thing that happens because of magic or chemistry. Right. It's a series of choices, um, you know, like, yeah. Anyway, so we missed all it's that. Weird. Yeah, that's stupid. So he, yeah, we miss all that. He breaks up with her. He leaves. Bella has scream nightmares. She's so sta- sad. Yes. Her dad is like, look, you're so bummed. I'm going to kick you out of this town. Mm-hmm. Like classic, classic like, dad stuff. You've listened to Bonnie Vare for three straight months while a camera dollied around you. So like, right. you got to leave. Get out of my house. <laughs> so he's like, you're you going to go live go. with your mom. And she's like, no, I have friends. Yeah, I figured. I'm going to go hang out with my friend. And so she, they go to see a zombie movie with Anna Kendrick. <laughs> why the fuck? Shots fired at the zombie genre. Yeah, no kidding. And also, why did Andrick, Anna Kendrick say yes to that? Like and again, I thought they were friends. Is the idea of like Bella's sad three months ago? She's three months right. ago. Right. I mean, that's an eternity in teenage years. That's like yeah, I know, I know. That's like entire regimes of cool trying, and uncool she, people were born and slaughtered. Right. She's she's trying to get back with her friends, and they make comments about it where they're like, "Oh, Bella's back." They make a comment uh, about it. You're right, and then they let it happen. Right. <laughs> like okay, and so while they're while they're they go see the zombie film and then they roast zombie films twilight sure. 2 does a bit where anna kendrick roasts zombie films uh and then we learn the first development which is that 
uh jacob not jacob edward can become a force ghost that's the question is it her imagination or is it actually him no i think it's actually him i don't know if that's really clear uh all right i would it would be a lot better if it was her imagination because that's what i thought it was supposed to be there's a very funny i thought funny development with his force ghost um, it's amazing. I don't know because okay, this force ghost is amazing uh, because all it does is shame her. Uh, it's a shame. Ghost, it's a shame. And ghost, he just yes. what I thought interesting was it, he's not he's not jealous, and I'll give him a little credit. Um, she sees a bunch of motorcycle dudes, yeah, and and she's like, I'm going to go talk to them, and 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 Edward Ghost shows up, and he's like, Don't do it. Don't do it. It's Don't dangerous. To it's too dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous. And then she, she, the guy rides her on the motorcycle. No, no, he, and then no, no. Goes, he doesn't ride her. He takes her on a ride on the motorcycle, presumably right. where later on some interlude will occur. Right. And just to be, right. just to be clear, I mean, the guy, the guy is definitely picking up this this eighteen year old. Right. right. This thirty five year old man uh, with an earring is definitely picking up this eighteen year old. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the pattern. I guess Just weird old guys. This is, I think this is the, I think I have to say I'm team Jacob because no. he's the only person who's her age. And I can't, if I ha- again, gun to my, that's why I said I'm team. No one. Right. Right. But gun to my head. I would go with the person who's not an old sex pervert. I have, uh, I would go with the one that's her age. I, I, right. I actually f- find it easy. I, that is a true thing. I agree with that. I find it easier to understand Edward's decisions than his, than than Jacob's. Right. And briefly, I just um, want to go back to one thing that we missed. So, like, the dad, when he says, you got to go back to Jacksonville, she says, oh, I'm going to go shopping. And he's like, I guess you don't have to go back to Jacksonville. Right. Be- he has to prove to her that her she's doing stuff. Right. And then he's like, you can stay here. <laughs> but it, to me, it was like Jacksonville or a shopping trip. Those are the one. Right. Pick one of those. <laughs> It's the flimsiest fucking plot. It's so bad. Uh, it made me laugh. Everything moves to each other in this screeching lurch. <laughs> uh, every piece of the of, of the complex puzzle that is this film. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, when I first saw Edward the Ghost, I laughed. Like I, vi- I, I laughed so out loud. Funny. I w- like it was it was pleasurable to me that they, they did that. Stuck Robert Pattinson on a green screen for a weekend. Yeah, uh, it was like he almost quit the series if they didn't write him out of the second movie for a break. Right, he just needed a break already. He was like, "No, nah, I can't do yeah, that." Yeah, he was like, "I can't." I can't do this. But here's here's the thing that I thought was interesting is so she's gonna get on the motorcycle with this weird thirty year old, uh, and Edward's like, "Don't do it. It's dangerous. Don't do anything dangerous," and he keeps telling her to not do anything dangerous, and um. And uh, she gets on the bike, and then the guy rides too fast, and she says, "Stop!" And he and he does stops, and he's like, and he's like, "Okay, see ya." And so I was like, "Oh, okay. I guess that guy wasn't that bad. He was still a creep, but at least when this this he at least he doesn't kidnap. People, he's the least monstrous you know? of the many monsters she has tried to date. Uh huh. And so she gets off. And so the what you take from that scene is Edward thought, "Don't get on the bike with the weird guy." Later, she brings Jacob. She brings motorcycles over to Jacob to fix up because she wants to see Edward again. This yes. is such a toxic relationship. Well, Half of the film is Bella putting herself in danger so Ghost Edward will show up and tell her to stop. I'm so glad that was clear to you because I it, I actually didn't realize that she was trying to make him appear. That was not clear to me. Oh yeah, that's why she's doing yeah, yeah, all that yeah. crazy I, shit. Well, I just sort of again, like I really lost the thread with her in this movie. I was really having a hard time following why she did things. Um, it's very, it's it's a toxic it's, as fuck. It's really toxic, and also it's gotta, unclear. And I'm glad. So I'm glad you picked up. She on that. says it like I just wanted to see you again. But I want to get to my, the, the all, this is all prelude. Uh, it's all prelude. Prelude to her then getting on a motorcycle by herself. Yes. And Edward shows up and he's like, don't do it. It's dangerous. And I realized, oh, he wasn't, he didn't concern himself with that biker guy. He's just scared of motorcycles. Yeah. yeah. Very, very scared like, of them. He, very understandably scared. He's, he's lived 109 years. He's probably seen a lot of motorcycle accidents in that time. I mean, his dad, his dad friend uh, is probably like, yeah, never, never get on a motorcycle. motorcycle. I've seen what that yeah. do to people because i'm a doctor yeah his actual father probably died on the first ever motorcycle when you think about it 
Yeah, you know? so Edward was like, yeah, no, go with that strange man, but don't get on his motorcycle. Are you Are kidding you me? That's a death kidding? trap. Yeah. Without a helmet? You maniac? Yeah. Yeah. That probably is what he um, wanted. By the way, her car, her motorcycle wreck should have been enough for anyone to be like, that's enough. Like, I will not be around for you with this motor. You're going to die on this. Uh, like that. I didn't think that was that bad of a oh, wreck, to dude. Be I, 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 I was I was like, upset get back on it. that road, is a motorcycle fella. <laughs> like when she got on the motorcycle, I was like, oh, cool. Now her character gets to do something cool uh, instead of just instead standing of around rent. watching yeah. two toxic dudes fight over her. I, and then it was like, I want her to be like a kick-ass motorcycle vampire. Well, I like. Uh, I don't hate the motorcycle and her riding it. That that wreck was very troubling, though. I thought it was like. Yeah, she nailed herself on the head. She almost died. It's like, that's... Right, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Like, saying Bella almost died is like saying, yeah, it's a Twilight movie. What do you expect? Like, she's going to almost die every one of these movies. Uh, And then uh, remain convinced that... What's that? Well, she almost dies, and then she remains convinced that nothing bad's going to happen to her uh, every time she dates one of these guys. I just can understand that. It's crazy. Right. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So Edward is literally ghosting her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. They, she gets on the strange bike. Um, uh, we we get uh, so she's hanging out with Jacob now. Right. So that's starting. And he's uh, and he's sweet. When she when she hits her head, he takes off his whole shirt to dab at her wound. And and and, and it was like I know who this is for. This is not. This is you know. Right. He puts the he doesn't he puts on like two more shirts the rest of the movie once that one comes off. The werewolves do their clothes fall off when they turn into I werewolves. Can't fucking no, I can't understand why okay. they don't wear shirts. Is there it's a reason insane. why they're yeah they're all shirtless. It's it is uh it's just so dumb. I can't like like it's like an instant tell that they're not normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're very clearly werewolves. It's funny how yeah. Jake, uh, not Jacob, Edward is clearly a vampire. And these guys are clearly werewolves. Right, and no one says anything about it. It's like, no. like hey, guys. See, they first see them. They're hucking their friend off a cliff uh, for fun. And right. he's like, oh, yeah, those guys, they're like a weird cult. And they're like a shirtless cult. And then Jacob, oh. Did you just put some together? what happens next. No, this is when Bella's friend, the one who's not right, the nerd. a weird. Yeah, the nerd. Yeah. Asks her on a date, and she group. She turns into a group. She thing. friend zones him pretty hard, and he yeah. he, which is fine. And he's disgusted by an action movie called Face Punch. So I want to talk about. Face oh, I do Punch. too. I, Face Punch. I wrote that down. I was like, that's a whole conversation. I just need to say though that like I don't know what could ever be in an action movie that a teenager who doesn't have a violent illness exactly could watch it and be grossed out to a point of vomiting. I cannot. That's why fucking I can only, understand that. What could that be? I can. I can only conclude that Face Punch, the movie Face Punch that they're going to go see, must be the best movie ever yeah. made. Yeah, because yeah. it it reduced a teenage a teenager to to like vomiting right. in a bathroom. Right. It ruined yep. him. He had to go home after watching Face Bunch. That's got to be a great fucking movie. It, it, it can't. It, I want to see. It Face can't Punch. be bad. It can't be a bad movie. Uh, because if it was a bad movie, uh, nobody could have enjoyed it, and he probably would have liked it. Right. Right. Like. Um, I don't know what the rest of the audience is doing, but Bella dated a vampire and Jacob's a werewolf, so maybe they have stronger stomachs. Yeah, but again, but but Dave, I'm comparing this to every single action movie ever made that I've seen. Right. Uh, there's not a single one that would reduce me to that kind of feeling. Exactly. That's but, why I want to see Face yeah, yeah. I want to see what it does to you. I just think it's one of those things where you watch it and like it, it's like sort of pick a hole. Something's coming out of there. You know what I mean? Like it could be vomit. You might shit yourself. You might like it. Might be an mm-hmm. orgasm. You don't know. And it's like a it's like Russian roulette with your body. You know what I mean? You're, That's the movie. <laughs> it's a it's it's pick a hole. Yeah, the pick movie. Pick a hole. The movie. And you spin the Russian roulette, and then just something's coming out. You know, like right. Sorry. Maybe it's like maybe your ears like scream wax out of them. I don't know. You know? That would be yeah. cool. Clear out that yeah. wax. Get them clear. You know. Yeah. So uh, that sounds like a chill movie. Also, why does he show up to this date? Would you show up to this date after she did that? He, I think he just likes her. And I get it. He's young. He's a teenager. He likes a girl. And then it becomes awkward because Jacob's the only one who showed up of the friends. So then it's just the three of them. I, my question is, why 
did we have this in the movie? Well, I, well and it, it also violates some other things, namely that he was already paired off with Anna Kendrick. So what happened there? Right. And I just don't know why this is happening because uh, the whole point of this yeah. is that then he goes to the bathroom because he's sick. He comes out and Jacob's like, what the fuck, man? What's wrong yeah, with you? Like he starts yelling right at him turn. and he turns like really yeah. hot. And it's just to establish that Jacob is turning into a werewolf. And you could have done that in any other <laughs> kind of scene. You didn't have to invent a movie called Face Punch and that this guy is getting sick. But let's be honest. He, he gets his own. He gets this whole arc. Right. And he's barely in the movie after this. I think it, it also sort of checks the box that she did some high school stuff, which mm-hmm. it, they do need to check that box. Otherwise, it's barely a Harry Potter you know what I mean? Like, right. Like, so yeah. that's part of it. And also, I think that there's something to be said for uh, there's something to be said for it brought face punch into our lives. Yeah, you know, that's it's like true. how can you be that mad about it? Right. I, I'm not that mad. So about it. right, I'm not. I'm not terribly mad. No, not at all. I'm just curious as to why the movie thought we needed it. Uh, I don't. I I, I I firmly believe it's like somewhere in a meeting they were like, we got to have her do some high school stuff. And right. like that's this is how they got to that, and the, and then it just stretched out into this whole face. It took about ten minutes. Thing. Yeah, it was about a ten minute yeah. detour. Uh, the the movie is actually not that long, though. Interestingly enough, it's a little over two hours. Yeah, it's two fourteen, right? Something like I, that. Yeah, that's pr- that feels long to in me. This movie it felt for Twilight. Long. It felt very long. I think Twilight's really needs to be an hour and a half each. Well, I don't. I, we'll get into Twilight at some point because I have I have like fundamental things okay. I want to talk about, but that's not. That's not it. Well, let's finish. Let's finish. Sure, the yeah, pl- yeah. I'm plot sorry, because we haven't even gotten to. Uh, we we ha- there's so much. There really is. Uh, he uh, so he um, he turns. He he tells like they they say he has mono. Right. Turns out he's just becoming, and he does the same. I promised he wouldn't hurt you, stuff. Right. And at this point, it's like Bella. These are red flags. You need to get and away. And you know that now because uh, you tried it once. Right. You know. Uh, you think she'd learn. And so he has the, like, in a matter of days, he has the I'm a bad boy transition. Right. He cuts his hair. Uh, he gets a tattoo. It's, it feels like he one basically, day. He basically transitions to college yes. in, like, a yes. day. Correct. Um, Correct. He becomes a professional so, wrestler in a day. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm afraid what I'm going to do. You have to get out of here. So she... Uh, she goes in the woods, right? Yeah. She goes in the woods and she runs into the vampire from the first movie. Yes, With who's the dress. only there to explain why he needs to die immediately. Yeah, we haven't even right. talked about the other vampire woman who wants to kill her. And they're really stretching that out. Yeah, like, I also... what is the plan here? Well, that was the weirdest thing of this movie, is they forget that plot exists. They did, and I have a pitch for how it should be better, but I'll wait till Twilight. Okay, so he's just like, hey, I'm here to kill you. Uh, Edward's just like, I love Edward's coaching of like, lie to him, threaten him. And she is so bad yeah, at definitely. it. Never uh, learned anything. No. And, uh, no. he, he, uh, he goes to eat her, but he takes a long time. He monologues. Forever. Holy shit. And then, yeah. And then we get the, the werewolves. And at this point we've been hearing about like bears in the woods. For two movies yeah. now, right? Yeah. And she sees these giant fucking werewolves and doesn't even think they're supernatural. Uh, she's just like, whoa, big wolves. And they and they clearly like have a motivation. Right. They're clearly, they are way more capable of thought and self-consciousness than a wolf is. Yeah. And at this point, I would be like, oh, great. That they're where I, I, Jacob's a werewolf. Like, obviously. Duh. Yeah. Well, right. It's so obvious. Yeah. If I were her at this point, I'm really like, what, am I going to fuck a mummy next? Is that what's happening next? And then as soon as she says it, you know what happens. She gets a shy little smile. You know right. what I mean? Like Then he shows up on the bus somehow. He's like, I'm the new student from Germany or whatever. And he's a mummy. Yeah. No, she, yeah, you know? exactly. He's got, he, no, he's wearing like a cool jacket, right? And she like looks yeah. at, and sees under his sleeve, like a bit of cloth sticking out. Oh, and he, yeah. Like, he goes, oh, and like covers it up. Yeah. And she's like, oh, he's not like other guys. Right. And, and he's got of, just like a skull face, too. Right. Like he's instead an of, obvious mummy. <laughs> but instead of smelling like death, he smells like lilacs and everybody notices. Right. You know, like and just like, like one weird tweak to make him beautiful. Right. Under his under his cloth, he like strips off his cloth and he's gorgeous. And he's like, yeah. I'm a monster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely what happens. And then, you know, she goes to the college years 
uh, where we reboot the cast and she fucks a Frankenstein. It's like right. obvious where this is going. It's it's Twilight Curse. They'll call right. the mummy one. Right. Yeah. Right. Twilight. <laughs> is that what it's going to be? Twilight Curse. Yeah. And then I think the Frankenstein one will be Twilight picking up the pieces. Could be that. Or something but like also, that. They could also just call it the Twilight Saga, the college years, and I think we would yeah. understand. You know? I want I want the Frankenstein to just be a Frankenstein too, like right. not like right. the first three are sexy, and then she's like, I want you to meet my uh, new boyfriend, Frankenstein's monster, and he's just like, yeah, and like he's just a f- it's Robert De Niro in like makeup, like in the yeah. Mary Shelley. Yeah, it's just they they horrific. lazily. They lazily give him an indie guitar to pretend like he's yeah. doing college student <laughs> shit, but he's not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's so, not uh, doing any of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, we, obviously, we should write Twilight. Uh, we should. We should yeah. write the next Twilights. Right. <laughs> the next ones that already happened, we should write them. <laughs> yeah. All okay, right. Okay, so we're still where going the fuck through this are plot. We? <laughs> we're still going through this plot. The werewolves of Protector. Jacob yeah. assassins creeds into her room. And at that yeah. point, she should be like, you're a fucking werewolf. But she doesn't. Right. It's insane. Yeah. He tells her, like, oh, I can't hurt you, that sort of stuff. I have a note of that. She then goes to his house and says, I have to see him and bursts in. Uh, and, like, don't ever burst into a teenage boy's room. Just throwing that out there. Don't, to any teenager's room. Like, any uh, teenager. It's, that's a, there's a lot of that in this in this franchise, yeah. in this saga. Well, Edward is just casually in her room earlier, looking through her photos. She's not home. He just goes in her room. This, uh, they see, both again, do it. But they like, do. Again, this is why I, I am so glad that we have personal shopper Kristen Stewart as a reference point. Because right. because she does take a while to masturbate in other people's clothes in that movie. She and it's does. Like, and it's like that's what's happening all the time when they're not on them in Twilight is just a bunch of teenagers uh, just doing terrible things to yeah, their bodies. Ta- yeah, taking it just, out. Just just taking it out. Get reaching some real dark dark corners. Right. Don't walk into anybody's I mean, room you know, with a UV light. Don't yeah, even bear, you know, don't even dare doing it. You know the werewolves have done it both as a human and as a werewolf. They have two different entirely different types of sex at their oh, disposal. Yeah. They're yeah. going out. They're fucking wolves. They're fucking regular like dogs and wolves. I th- see. I think that's actually I, one of the great appeals of the werewolf is like they have a way that is basically costless to them as humans. Oh right? yeah, like, you get to do crime. You get to yeah. do any crime you want. Right. You can rob a bank as a werewolf, and then you right. leave as a human. Right. <laughs> and like you could wear a fucking mask and actually shoot a gun as a werewolf. Nobody's gonna ask any questions. They're gonna be no. like a wolf. No one questions a wolf in a mask. Nope. <laughs> I never do. I never ask any questions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then they, they, she runs up to her, his bros and she's like, what the fuck guys? And she like slaps one of them and he's like, don't make me angry. And he hulks out and they really took the fun out of becoming a werewolf. Yes. Cause they just do it real fast. Like in the blink of an eye. Right. It, it didn't look good either. It looked like a matrix sequel. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, no, it was I mean, bad morph. Well, this was around the time as the Matrix sequel, so that no, it's out. four years later. It's four or five years later. Really? Yes. I don't they know had, time. They'd done all kinds of shit that was better looking oh, you're than the right. Matrix. Yeah, by then. Matrix sequels are more like two thousand four ish. There'd been many Harry's Potter by this point. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Um, and then, so then she gets kind of the Cullen treatment from the werewolves, as that they uh, and then Jacob turns into a werewolf and fights his werewolf bro. And they take her, they just kidnap her. They're like, okay, let's take her away. And they take her to their house. They meet the fiance that he mauled, that the other guy mauled. That was fucking crazy. Yeah, because she made Uh, him angry. And if you make him angry, he'll turn into a wolf and maul you. So you can't cross him. I don't understand why you would write this stuff into a young adult's novel well, i don't understand they're that. actually considering the consequences i actually like this because uh, they're they're considering like oh you you dating a werewolf or dating a vampire well he's an old man who's going to hell and you're gonna turn slowly turn old and die and he's gonna have to watch you you date a werewolf well you better not get into an argument with him because he'll turn into a fucking werewolf but again they're bringing it up just to sort of nod at it they never deal with it it seems like it's all an allegory for abusive relationships yes that's exactly what i wrote down i wrote down the phrase i see if i can 
if I can find it, where I was like, so the second movie is, is entirely about a psychotic woman who's so deeply troubled she needed the danger of a vampire to keep her occupied, uses a werewolf who turns out exactly the same as the vampire did, and then they're both just a metaphor for emotional and physical abuse. Yeah. That's what I wrote down. I wrote down that, and I was like, this is uh, crazy to teach this to kids, right? Well, I don't know. Did you see the new Invisible Man? But the Invisible Man is a horror movie about the subject. Well, here's the thing: is that that's that's what's the disappointment of Twilight, is if this whole saga ended with her say, her going, you know what? Fuck both of you guys. Exactly. If that's where it went, it would yes. have worked. It would have worked great if she was like, I don't need any of this shit. Or if uh, it, it ends with Edward going to counseling or something. You know, it's like they all work on their shit and in, like you know, and like actually grow up and manage. Either way, it, they're not gonna n- do that. none of them should be in a relationship with each other. Not right now. They're very uh, toxic for each other. They're both not toxic. as such. Yeah, because she's Maybe. risking her life to see him, um, and it's but like uh, it's, totally... they keep threatening, endangering themselves. Yes, they do. Are you totally opposed to Edward and Jacob in a relationship? Because I'm not totally opposed to that. I haven't seen them together yet. I don't know what that would be. I got news for you. You're not going to see any of these people together. Yeah. So far, as far as I can tell, Twilight's a, Twilight is the ultimate, like... Uh, it's transitional. The, it, it's always relationship yes. transitional moments. Well, it's, it's masturbation without climaxing. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's right. what it is. Like, you never get to release. Never You happens. never see the relationships. Um, Correct. So... Correct. So, so they they're real edge lords. They're like, check it out. We could read, it. we could hear each other's thoughts. No kidding. You freaked out yet? And she's just like, no, nah, man. I know vampires. <laughs> um, right. She right. comes down hard on Jacob for being a werewolf, and I was like, my God, Bella, you're dating. You've dated a vampire. She says, can you just stop being a werewolf? It's wrong. And he has to explain, yeah. like, we're not killing anybody. It, well, and that's when it started to feel like it was sort of a, a metaphor for homosexuality or something. It was really weird because they used the wrong terms, like yeah. lifestyle choice and, and like identity. Like they used the wrong words. It, it was like, oh, this is not a good road to walk down. I didn't even think about that. Uh, it was weird. It, I didn't I didn't understand it. Uh, there's maybe, definitely maybe, it. All right. It feels like a Neil Breen movie where it's like, I don't understand what the message is. But the, the, the writer clearly had something in their mind. Uh, they clearly were working something out. I don't uh, know. That's the I, impression I, I get where it's like, I feel like this is supposed to be a metaphor for something, but not the right thing. I think, I think they think it means something else. This, I isn't, heard, this isn't like as clumsy as the Matrix sequel. Right. But it has... See, the Matrix sequel was daring in some ways, where it was like trying to incorporate new ideas and new philosophies to be yeah. interesting. This was like, we have to do the same plot over again, but also we have to expand the world. Those to me seemed like the only two big objectives, right? It's, it's not a twilight unless we do exactly the same movie and we have to introduce the other side. That's the, right. those are the objectives. I don't know, man. I don't know either. Uh, all right. So Edward left this whole mess. She gets, she gets, Werewolf protection, because they're like, there's a vampire after you. Sure. Uh, they're like hunting werewolves in the woods. The oblivious co- cop dad doesn't notice when a werewolf vampire fight happens behind him. Uh, his yeah. friend has a heart attack and dies because he's attacked. The The vampire jumps off a cliff, and Bella just also happens to jump off a cliff. Yeah. It was like, wait, what's, what's that about? She, uh, well, she saw the cliff jumping. She wanted to see Edward. So she knew she had to put herself in danger. Right. So she jumped off a cliff, drowned herself, and Edward got, and then she got to see Edward again. Yeah, down on the water. uh, Because it's a fucking disaster relationship. Right. Yeah, and then Jacob pulls her out, uh, and then we see the vampire woman who's after her kind of swim away, uh, and then they (laughs) completely forgot about that plot line. Right, and then... (laughs) That's where you have to ask some questions about, like, so what's her movie? Like, what's she up to? Right. Uh, Imagine if in the Terminator, the third act just suddenly forgot there was a Terminator after sure. Sarah Connor. Sure. That's what happens. Because they're like, this yeah. vampire's after you. She wants to kill you. And then the last act, they're like, but there's this other thing we have to do. And they never wrap up the fucking vampire plot. They don't. And it feels very much like they thought they had themselves a... 
uh, a Harry Potter situation. Because, like, in the second movie of Harry Potter, there isn't really a direct Voldemort piece. There's a Tom Riddle who it turns out is Voldemort. Right, right, right. We don't they, really... Yeah, they're like, and it's Voldemort. Yeah, right. So we shouldn't right. say this. We shouldn't say the name, Adam. Of Voldemort. Oh, I'm so sorry. Shh. Shut up. You know, if Shut you hear a weird, <laughs> if you hear a weird knock at my door and then some hissing, you'll know what happened. All right. Uh, in any case, uh, that I, I, th- I, I again really feel like this movie is influenced in a dumb way by the Harry Potters. Uh, this one oh, in particular yeah. felt like they were yeah. stealing all the time from well, Harry Potter. Yeah, you. This is so. It's such a cynical version. Yes. Where they're like, we just want to make money and create some bullshit lore for right. the kids. It doesn't respect its audience. Uh, yeah, definitely not. And yet I enjoyed it. So what does that say about me, I guess? It wasn't all bad uh, I at was all. with it. I was with it till the end. I was not with it for large portions of the middle with Jacob because I did not understand that, uh, that she was still trying to create these moments with Edward. Right. I didn't, that, I didn't, that didn't click for me, so I really didn't yeah. understand what she was trying to do for a very long time in this movie. She's using Jacob as like a rebound. Yes, yes. That was clear. It was very clear she doesn't really want him. Uh, right. Like, because the way that she refuses to engage. It's like, simple as that, man. Like, yeah, with Edward, there was she, no hesitation. I think becoming a werewolf really hurt his chances. As much as you'd think it'd be the opposite, I think the appeal of Jacob was going to be, oh, this is like a... Just a, you know, a regular bodybuilder teenager. A regular swole-up teen that I can have a normal relationship with. Not to be totally ridiculous, but I I think you have to, you have to assume that this, this uh, young woman needs an element of danger to get off. Like, I think Uh, you have to, dude, you have to. I have to. I I, I try not, I, I don't know. Uh, The movie says that. The movie says it. I, I think that she clearly is attracted to the danger Danger. because of the vampire. But I think she was digging on, I think she was digging on Edward before he, she knew he was a vampire. I think that she, I I think it's all in the subconscious space here, man. I, you know, know, I don't presume to know what, what fetishes a teenager has in a movie. A hundred percent. And I'm not speaking for it, Uh, but I will say, I think the film is saying this. I really do. I really think the film is saying this. I don't know, man. I'll tell you why. Because in the first movie, remember how we had all that aggressive camera work to introduce the crushes? And like the first right. movie was way more adventurous and aggressive about the intensity of things, you know, uh, which I think is in, now in hindsight, because the second movie, they just let off the throttle entirely on that. It tells me that part of the attraction to Edward was the intensity of it. So yeah, again, there's a kind I, of adrenaline I, well, junkie here. I think when you're a teenager, yeah, absolutely, that sort of stuff appeals to you. But I think post Edward, I think Jacob would be like she rebounds to Jacob because he's the opposite, right? He's a he's a hometown boy. He stays there, but he's not he's the not, opposite. He's, he's exactly he's the a, same. He's a swole up jock. Well, that's the realization. That's what makes it suck. Uh, is that. Like, I think her first attraction is he's, like, nice, he's friendly, he's talkative. Edward right. is mopey and skinny yes. and pale. And They're withdrawn. the two sides of... the. All right, the, the purpose of both of these characters is it's fantasy fulfillment of the two types of guys that this this movie, whoever wrote them, whoever designed them... I, I never looked up the author of Twilight. Stephanie Meyer uh, is her name. Okay, okay. She was in the first one, by the way. Oh, what did she play? She's like at the diner and they pour her coffee and there's a shot on her and you're like, why are we seeing this woman? And that's why. Damn uh, it. I have to go back and look. Yeah. It's a real, it's a real, like it's an, it's a really obvious one where you're like, I don't know why this person's in this shot. Right. It's a um, Stan Lee. It's a Stan Lee. Cameo. Yeah. It's a real Stan Lee. But yeah. So, so I, I, they're, they're like, yes, ultimately this is why Bella's arc should be that realization of you guys are the fucking same. Fuck right. both of you. But, like, he's the swole jock, you know, bro who's, like, really outgoing. And Jacob's, like, the skinny, mysterious goth type guy, the, the emo guy. Edward is. Who, Edward is. Yeah. Right. Edward, Edward's the yeah. musician who writes poetry. Exactly. So they're, like, yeah. two clear fantasies. And then right. it makes sense that one's a, fan, one's a vampire, one's a werewolf. And so I think the idea is that if Jacob wasn't a werewolf, she might have just been, like, enough of this vampire shit. 
I'm just going to continue my fucking life uh, and, and and hook up with this Jacob guy. And maybe maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. Like, she should just continue her goddamn life. She's stuck on this vampire uh, shit. hundred percent. It, 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 it's dragging you her down. And Ed, I got to give Edward credit for knowing that and being like, I got to get out of here. But yeah, he's, he's got to actually get out of there. He's got to not ghost ghost appear uh, and like talk down to her because he's a fucking weirdo. This is where I don't see. I do not believe he's creating those projections at all. I I I mean, maybe we'll find out in movie three that he is. And if that's if that's the it case, seems I'm gonna, such, it's like such a fucking vampire thing to do. It does. But I'm going to like this movie a lot less if that's true. I'm going to like think, it a lot I less. I think that's what he's doing. I don't think so. I think it's her, man. I think it's just like a fantasy that she's living out. Well, then because I'm it, very, very worried about her. Yes, you should be. You should be. She's she's a terrifying individual who only makes bad decisions and makes them with the kind of gusto that she thinks she's the vampire already. That's how I feel about it. It's like this woman is, is very troubled. Like right. she needs legit help. I mean, I don't understand also, by the Someone way. Someone needs to step in. Uh, for sure, for all of this. I kind of wish... Yes. You know what would have been great? If they go to Michael Sheen and they're just yeah. like, guys, you guys... Like, if they just went to Edward and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? She's like 18, bro. Hey, get out of... Yeah. Go, go, go right. get out of here. Gee, I mean, we get, eat people, get, but like, this is fucked up. Like, right. what are you By doing, way, man? When she passes that whole like that whole parade of tourists with the kids at the end, that like, was that great. Was very, I loved that. Very grim. Yeah, I did too. I liked I it. I fucking also. loved that. Can I make I one? I love s- the, the morality stuff. I I do too because that's what makes us interested in a movie about vampires. Right. We haven't finished the plot of the movie. We're I still know, man. In, we're still in highlight, Adam. God. All right, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So she jumps off the cliff. Jacob saves her. They're like, this vampire is after you. Edward calls, uh, and Jacob picks up, and he says... That's weird. That was very weird. to speak to her dad, which felt very, like, old-timey, she's property type of thing. I don't know why he's trying to talk to her dad. That and whole he says, beat was incredibly clumsy. It's very dumb, because then like, Jacob what says is this? he can't talk, to, talk right now. He's planning a funeral and hangs up. And because he doesn't understand the funeral thing... Also, Alice is there now. Al- his, we got to talk about Alice. not sister. Alice, I need to talk about in some detail. Okay. I just need you to know that. I need you to know that, Dave. Yeah. We got to talk about Alice. And so Alice is like, uh, she sees the future and she's like, oh my God, Edward thinks you're the one who died. She thinks you jumped off the cliff because I came here because I saw you jumping off the cliff and I didn't realize you were doing it for fun. It's really, it's really fucking sweaty. And she's like, now no he's going to go to Michael Sheen. And kill himself. Right, death by vampire. That's yep. that's that's his next move. So it's Romeo and Juliet. He thinks she's dead, so right. he's gonna kill himself. Correct. And he's gonna he goes to Michael Sheen. They have to quickly fly out to I don't know Italy. Yeah, where the fuck was that? I thought it was Rio de Janeiro at first. I don't know because of the Jesus that was lit up. Well, in the background. I think that's where he was, and then he had to go do the. I don't know. Right. So he's out in Rio having a whole movie. Maybe it's we gotta all talk in Rio. That. I don't know. I. I I have no fucking idea. Hard to say. It was weird that they, when they were all wearing the red robes, by the way, when they were celebrating the festival of getting rid of vampires. So like what? Okay. Right. Uh, it was weird to see like people wearing just like regular shorts and tank tops under yeah. those robes. <laughs> that was fucking yeah, weird. What else are they going to wear? Um, I, I know, but it was weird. Anyway, go ahead. So he goes to the suicide council and he's like, kill me. And they're like, no, you're too valuable for because of mind reading. And I was thinking like, really? That's the bar. Uh, all right. Yeah, they loved it. There's got to be some piece of shit vampires, and yeah, they're like prof- he's like Professor X. Like they all have mutant powers, and he's right. like, oh, you're you're very talented. Right. So so he's like he can only do one thing, and so he has to do something unforgivable. So the vampire council will kill him. So Edward decides to, which they noon, know he's going to do. They also know he's going to. Yeah, do they it. do, but they don't. Yeah, which it's like, why not just kill him then? But whatever. Kill him or put him in jail and let him cool off. I think off. like by vampire law, they, they're like, all right. I mean, it's like suicide by cop where they're like, right. we gotta let we're you not going to execute you. But if you do it, like we're going to have to kill you. Right. Um, and so he, he at noon, he decides that he's going to unrobe and walk out in this parade and show the world that he's a vampire, which is very funny. 
because That'd be amazing because nobody's going to think that he's a vampire. Because no, of that. they're just going to think he's a guy on drugs covered yes. in body glitter. Yes. They're just going to be like, look how pretty he is. Yeah. Poor guy. See because you later. As there's no this world, it's established that it's not a common knowledge that sparkling makes you a vampire. Because it shouldn't be because that's insane. Because that's insane. Because <laughs> that's really dumb. So that's the that, biggest that's reach. That's his plan. That's his plan. Yeah. yeah. And so there's an action scene where Bella shows up. And then Alice is like, you have to go ahead. He'll read my mind and know that I'm coming and he'll do it quicker. To which I was thinking, well, then Alice, say to him through your mind... Bella's alive. I'm maybe with you can't, Bella. Maybe you can't lie in your mind. Like, maybe your mind is like an open... Like, but like that's not a lie. Bella is there. She's with Bella. Oh, right. She could... That Right. Yeah. Why doesn't... Yeah, She exactly. should let him read her, mi- her totally. mind. Because then he'll know, oh, totally. Bella's alive. But so there's an action scene where she has to run through... And basically right before he walks out into the sunlight to sparkle, she wraps her body around him and shoves him back inside. Uh... And that's when the vampire council is like, we need to speak to all of you. And that's where I was hoping they'd be like, uh, guys, what the fuck is going on? What well, is all this? It, it, they kind of do in that they they then sentence him to death because she knows about them, which is like, well, wait a minute. If he wanted to die, he could have just said what he did. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't need to do this right. grand reveal. He could have just been like, oh, and I've also been having sex with an 18-year-old human. Uh, right, you know, like you know what I mean. Like that's another. But problem. we learned they have it. Like in Blade, they have the familiars. They have like, oh, these are humans that we we you know we fuck we 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 fucking we, pretend that bags. yeah we tell them oh you'll be a vampire. They have interns. Yeah, they got and they got blood bags. I get it. It makes yeah. sense to me. So, and then what happens is basically they're like what they all right. Then we learn a question we were wondering, and you predicted this. We learned that Spell, Bella is a special girl. Yes, I, it, it's the only reason you'd bring that up. It's like right. the only—it's it, the only way to justify the fact that he, he the, the her mind can't be read by him. It's the only way. Right, and so they're like, none of our vampire powers can work on you. That's very. He's like Michael Sheen's really into it, and then he's like, yeah, but he I'm is. afraid we're gonna have to kill you, right? Because these dummies brought you into our vampire world. You're you're you know way too much. He um. So he can't read her mind. His power is to read minds by touching them. So he has the same power as Edward, but just with touch. Yeah, no, it's not that. It's that he can live all their memories. That's what it is. So it's it's like it's Edward can just hear what you're thinking in the moment. Michael Sheen can know your entire history by touching you. Why is Edward's power more useful? That I don't know. Maybe not more, but I don't okay, know. I don't know going. why they're like you're so useful. They have a they have another uh, vampire who can fucking say the word pain and make you in pain. It's like isn't she that was, better? That's a fucking rad vampire for sure. That yeah, deserves a whole other sequel. Yeah, she says it so sequel. softly. She says she yeah. goes pain, if, and then if, he's if, like, <laughs> and it was great. If Twilight 5 ends up just being uh, that one episode of Lost where we meet that one couple that dies that we never see again, right. but about Dakota Fanning with her pain powers, yeah, great this, movie. Into this, it. Yeah, this movie teased a much better movie within it, which is the Michael Sheen Dakota Fanning adventures. Oh my God. Uh, they're just you, like, on the side of this. They're just doing Interview with a Vampire. They're just doing the Twilight version of Interview with a Vampire. Right. <laughs> and they're so, running around. So what happens is they're like, we have to kill you if you're not going to turn her. Yeah. And then Alice steps in, steps up and goes, no, like the, Robert Pattinson, uh, Edward fights for a while. They have a vampire fight. And then Alice yeah. is like, stop. We will turn her. I'll do it if right. I have to. Alice I had a vision. Yeah. yeah. She says, I had a vision and I saw her as a vampire. And I want to talk about the vision. Sure. I don't because, even know what her visions mean. They're, yeah. they're so unreliable. Well, she said, uh, it's like, it's like, uh, this is the direction we're heading in. Right, it's like, okay, but then she decides to have fish for supper and we're in a different way. It's like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like I, I, there's, a, there's a Rick and Morty look, episode look. about this where he digs say, that tell crystal's it, tell brain. It, tell it to your devs podcast or whatever. Like, that's yeah. a, that's a, it's a, yes. Yeah, so who, who knows the nature of time travel and... Sure, sure, sure. Maybe it's... I know. She's uh, seeing uh, into different timelines and, and, and parallel universes, I assume. I, I'm not trying to be shitty about it. I'm just saying, like... It's it, because of the way it's executed in this movie. It's it, it's hard to take it as like a big deal that she's right. it's like it could change at any minute. That's yes. the thing we already know. 
But her vision that we see, because Michael Sheen's like, show me. Uh, and so he grabs Alice's hand yes, and he, does. he sees what her vision is. And it's of Edward and Bella like prancing through the woods dressed as they Hansel really and Gretel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and no, there's no indication she's a vampire in that vision. Also, why doesn't Bella end up experimenting with a witch in college? Just I know. Put that on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like, there's no indication that they're uh, that they're uh, at all. Van- it's like she's a vampire in that vision. No, no. You see her eyes. Her, oh, she has okay. the yellow she's eyes. She's got vampire eyes. She has okay. yellow eyes. Yeah. It's like the thriller moment where she yeah, turns yeah, to the see, camera. She had the eyes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing in that woods dressed like that. It's very weird. You can't question anything it's anybody like does in the woods in this. Fest. You can't question the woods in this movie. That's where everything fucking happens. Everything you know happens I mean? in the woods, yeah. It really does. Is this a good time for me to talk about Alice? Can I briefly talk about Alice? Well, I'm just going to wrap it up because then what okay, happens is yeah, uh, they, they, Michael Sheen's like, cool, all right, you can all go. They pass by that tour group that's going to get eaten. And then they vote on whether or not she gets to be a vampire. Um, Why do they vote? It's not know. their decision. And then they, well, she wants it. They're voting whether or not they can let her into her clan, their clan. The the dad says, I won't lose my son, talking about Edward, uh, to which I thought, he's not your fucking son, yeah. you weirdo. Yeah, you, you doctor, I'm putting as many air quotes yeah. as I can around that word. Uh, and then, and then Ed, Edward goes into the woods. They have a quick fight with Jacob. Uh, uh, I wouldn't call it a fight. I'd call it more it's of like a, a yell. They turn. They turn. He turns into a werewolf. They tease. And There's then a little they teasing. and then they stare at each other. And then instead of everybody fucking, they go separate ways. Um, and then Edward says, "Look, if I can turn you into a vampire, you have to do something for me. First of all, I want to do it in like three years." He says five. She haggles him down to three. Right, like three more movies worth of time. What do you yeah. think? <laughs> Yeah. And then he says, yeah. you have to marry me. And she goes, oh, and then it ends. Yeah. The gasping was used a lot in this movie. The gasp was very funny as well. It made me laugh. I yeah. totally agree. So All that, right. Well, that that's highlight. We did it. Uh, it's only taken an hour and 20 minutes to summarize yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah, two yeah. hour movie. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so can we, I'm going to, we're moving into Twilight. That's it. We're moving All in right. there. Okay. Play the sound. <laughs> Are you going to add sounds? No. Oh, I hope you do. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, not great. even a little bit. It should just be a gasp. Anytime we move in any segment, just... <gasps> right. Know, uh, just a gasp every time. Um, okay, so look, Alice. I know that that doesn't seem like an important point, but you will see Alice is the linchpin of my entire problem with this movie. Are you ready? Really? I like Alice, by the way. I think I it's because she's got the young Parker Posey look, so... I like her look, too. They fixed yeah. her hair in this movie, which was very important. Sure. Because uh, her I, hair was I, bad I, in the I, first one. I, it was not important to me, but sure. It was sure you weirdo. She was more of a character in this one, but they totally changed her character. By the way, between these two movies, like in the first movie, she was kind of standoffish and moody. Same as Rosalind, her other sister, who's not even in the movie at all, barely, except for the one line. And she is sort of like the bal- the the new gal pal for uh, for Bella, right? So, just a couple of points. The whole movie. We get Bella's feelings because she is uh, sending emails to Alice that never get delivered. That never get delivered. Like I a, don't know why that's happening. She's a real happening. maniac. She's sending. She knows they're not being delivered, <laughs> and, and she, she keeps, keeps sending emailing them. them. It's and, so and, fucking weird. And also, Alice can just see what you're thinking. So if Alice wants to check in, bro, she can do that. I thought maybe that was her way of doing it. Like Alice know. was getting these. Well, first of all, Alice can't see what you're thinking. She can see the future. Oh right, 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 right. So, but Alice can. But again, it's sort of like Alice can fast forward their conversations, right, to like find out what's going on with Bella easily, right? Right. By seeing the future. So, like, it's a fruit. It's a pointless endeavor. Completely pointless. Right. Writing to a vampire. Writing undeliverable messages to a vampire email? who can see the future. Yeah, yeah. I, I really was hoping Alice would be like Bella for the last time. Vampires, we don't have emails. We have our own internet. <laughs> all right, like it's stop made of blood. We have blood sending, cables. Yeah, we have blood <laughs> cables. Stop sending those emails. It's so weird. You, every time I see you, you, go, "Why don't you get my emails?" And I keep saying, "I don't have email." Right. Like I, I wanted have... the address on there to be Alice at Vampire or something. Like she's mm-hmm. just assuming that's how you mm-hmm. reach a vampire. That would be, uh, I would love it if it was a child's idea of vampire internet. I'd yeah. be thrilled by that. 
and okay. then we get a whole co- side conversation about vampire internet. Right. I'm not done yet, Dave. I'm sorry. I'm not why, done yet. I don't know why she... I think what they were trying to establish is that she was the closest to Alice in that group. So that's why yes. Alice would show up and be like, yes. I was worried about you. It's clearly just so they have the plot mechanic of Alice showing up again. It's clearly because of that. Yeah. It's so, like in Marriage Story where he's still friends with uh, her mom. Like, that's like, they had a breakup, but she's like, it's like, well, shit, I still like your sister. Your si- not sister. Your pretend sister. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not, just because we're not dating doesn't mean I can't hang out with her. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see her, like, hanging out with Alice throughout the movie. And Alice I would be agree. like, yeah, forget that. He's a wiener. Did I even tell you what, what he was like growing up? I wouldn't because we were already adults when we met. But I, but you know, I've looked through his like But we pretended to be burn. children in the first couple of years that we were, va- like they turned him into a vampire and they're like, you're babies now. Act like babies. <laughs> we're a family. <laughs> so they had to act like babies. <laughs> that seems like a thing that happened for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you, thank you because your observations on Alice are totally valid. Now, thank you. Alice presents a huge problem for this movie and the problem is that alice is normal she's a normal person she's uh, a vampire she, but okay but as a as a vampire she has a normal re- like like a, a cadence of speech and a behavior pattern that is recognizable right uh she which doesn't mean- act like a fucking creep which means the rest of these vampires are intentionally acting like fucking creeps okay here's what i think is the theory the the reason and i haven't looked into the lore of alice Sure. I think the idea is the more normal they speak, the more recent they became vampires. But no, no, no. It's not, that's not true because her boyfriend, Jasper, is a younger vampire, which is why he's so bloodlusty. Right. And she's like his carekeeper because like she's older than him. She's I'm better at it. I think she's more social, too. Like I, I do Clearly. like this idea where there's some vampires who are still like like fucking wearing like, you know, old frilly outfits like from the French Revolution. Me too. Me too. And then... There's ones that are just like, and they're talking like, yeah, they're speaking in weird poems. And then their friend is like, hey, Greg, could you stop, man? Right. It's, I, it's, some it's vampires are leaning into it. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I'm just like, and there's another one that's just like, just cool. It's just wearing right. a t-shirt. Right. Because I realize them... that is if I become a vampire, I think what I do is I just find an easy way to get blood all the time and then right. nothing else would change. Right. You would true play blood, video you'd, be a tr- you'd be a true blood vampire. Sure. I don't know what that means. I just they, play video games and watch movies and stuff. The premise of True Blood is they solve the problem of vampires needing blood by making synthetic blood. Oh. That's the premise of True oh, Blood. Oh, I'm not going to make beginning. synthetic. I'm not that smart. I'm just saying I, I'd eat a bunch of rats or so I'd do a Louie thing and I'd just eat rats and play video games. I mean, that's assuming that you have those kind of choices. I mean, that sounds great. That's what right. I would do too. But it, it feels like... I wouldn't like, lean into it, I don't think. I, I can't ever see you quoting any poem uh, in a dramatic way. I just cannot but see speaking that. Speaking of which, this opens with the the violent delights thing that I don't even know what that's from. I assume it it's from something because it's also in Westworld. Oh, the first monologue of the movie? Right. That's like a weird These twi- violent twilight. violent delights have violent ends or whatever. That's yeah. from something. And I, I feel like people are yelling at me right now because they do it in Westworld too. They quote the same thing. So that's a real, that's a true good sign of good writing is when they quote that. <laughs> sure. Uh, another a great sign of great filmmaking is up. to have over 150 indie music montages in the first 40 minutes, which this movie mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. This movie, there is a moment where we see a murder happening to a Tom York, uh, just mopey, uh, or I guess sort of poppy <laughs> okay. mope Sorry, track. And I, I ha- it bumped me out so fucking hard. It really bummed me out, dude. These violent delights have violent ends. Uh, of course, it's a quote from Romeo and Juliet. Ugh. I've already gotten the record in saying that I think Shakespeare is no good. Uh, I love that take. Yeah. And for, for right now, I'm loving that take. Just normally, use normal I think words. that's dumb take. Just use normal words. <laughs> Who cares about rhythm, bro? Just put words together that we I, like. If I can't fucking understand what you're saying, bro. <laughs> then you just look like a real horse's ass. Because it's not me that needs to change. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, know how you, I know where you're coming from. Okay. I, I, I know where you're coming from. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that Tom York montage was like a, a 100% bummer for me. 
it's I'm I'm very excited for when you get into Trilight because <laughs> I don't know if you've looked up who made this. I looked up the director, but I didn't look up uh, I didn't look up for more okay. than just that he was a director. No, just the director um, surprised me. What the director it both surprised and didn't surprise me. Uh, I didn't look it up, so I, I, frankly, we can move into that now because okay. I feel like tri- Trilight's a part of the Twilight conversation. Am That's I wrong? true. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Um, yeah, the director. Uh, David Slade, uh, before this movie, did 30 Days of Night, which is a vampire horror film. <laughs> Great. And before that, did Hard Candy, which is about oh, Ellen Page luring a pedophile. That. And I was like, yeah, pedophile stuff that checks out for the Twilight. You love he, that. He went on to do several Black Mirror episodes, including sure. Bandersnatch, the, well, the, the, is- the one that people loved. He also did the best uh, Nightmare Cinema uh, which you probably haven't seen. It's a anthology horror. He did the best one of those. He's a very good director, I think. I don't think this is the same director. I don't think. I don't think you have the right director here. Uh, uh, twi- the be- Twilight si- Saga. Um, no, sorry, he did Eclipse. Yeah, yeah, not the right movie. I'm on yeah. the wrong one. Oh, yeah, yeah. everybody. All right, nobody. All right, everybody, ignore what I just said. I'm going to uh, tell you what he did do, though. Shit. You're going to oh, like I wanna, this. I want to know. I want to know. Now now I'm excited for Eclipse, because it's a very good director doing that one. Yeah. Well, this guy Twilight directed Seven. eight things. and uh, This is they Chris were White's. Chris White's. And New Moon was the second to last thing he directed. Okay. Uh, he is a producer, primarily. Yeah, I see that. He produced a billion things. He's produced a lot of things you've seen. Okay. American Pie, he produced. Uh, American Pie 2. Bunch of TV. Uh, I'm looking to see it. Pinocchio. It's is in pre-production. Well, He's what's producing his directing? that. What's his? He he didn't direct anything that's that. Member Operation Finale from two years ago. I'm looking at it right now, and I I I disagree. He about directed a boy. About a boy. Yeah. He had an uncredited American Pie, The Golden Compass, but uh, Down to Earth, a movie I quite enjoy. Yeah, Down to Earth's okay. I, I like I that agree. one. Where Chris Rock uh, dies and goes into an old white guy's body. <laughs> it's great. Sure, sure. Uh, is he the only director of that, or did he direct with his brother? I don't Let's know. look and see, because a, there's a Paul White's. No, he directed with Paul. Okay. I think he's kind of the producer of the duo. Okay. That's so my... This is, a, this is a power team. Well, you know, it's the, it's the brother duo thing. I, I okay, would argue well, that New I'm Moon is... Very, I'm very excited for the next one, Eclipse. Knowing Great. that there's a very talented director. I wonder if they saw they were watching uh, Prisoner of Azkaban and they're like, oh, let's get one of those. Let's get like a good director to do one of ours. I mean, it does track. They are definitely trying to Harry definitely Potter watching the series. All the Harry Potters, yeah. For sure. I, I would say it's probably just based around the idea that they need to justify the expense at a certain point, right? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. He also produced Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It looks like. And right. they, they write Rogue One? Maybe he wrote Rogue One? Yeah. Oh, I forgot the part where um, where Edward says to her, because he says, I don't want you around and leaves. And then even after all that, when she, they re, like, when she finds him again and she tells him not to kill himself, I wrote mm-hmm. down the quote because he said, I had to lie and you believed me so easily. Yes. And I was like, oh, even really now crazy. you're negging her? You're negging her, Edward? Really? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't believe what an idiot I don't know why you're you so were. mad at, at, he at makes Edward. It, gonna... He makes it her fault. He says, oh, you believe me too easily that I told you to fuck off. And it's like, fuck you, Edward. You're a, you're a fucking, you're toxic. Yeah, he is toxic. But again, I think he's the only one who's sincerely trying to weigh the costs here. I don't think anybody else is doing that. I think he yeah, is. Yeah, but not a good enough because he... Not he good should, enough. I he agree, should, but... If he, if he actually sincerely weighed the cost, he wouldn't fuck it. He would go away. He would go away forever. He sure. wouldn't emo about it. He sure. wouldn't try to kill himself. Agreed. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's one thing... Okay. He's, he's not a good guy. I'm not well, saying that he is. Well, it's one thing if Edward had, had depression... Or was like which he does. I guess he does, but it doesn't. Maybe yeah. Maybe he does. Maybe he did before he met Bella. I shouldn't it, go be so hard on him for the it, attempted he's suicide. But way it seemed mopier like it seemed very. Rip. It seemed like he was being very emo. Like you are my reason to live. Right, he right, was right. being Anakin Skywalker in the Star Wars prequels, but he's a hundred and six 
or nine, nine, 109. 109. And so it's like, come on, man. I, here's my I theory on that. I hope to never be like you when I'm 109, and I will be, Adam. <laughs> God, I really hope you make it to 109. I'd yeah, love to see your happen. vlog. I'd love to see your fucking... Look, I'm barely you know, your, getting through this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Your virtual vlog or whatever the fuck exists then. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Yo, so uh, here's my theory on that. Uh, I just lost my train of thought. Holy shit. Don't leave, don't leave this in, Dave. Don't betray me. I'm going to leave all this in. Oh, God. It's all uh, staying in. Why, why would I do anything? I don't know why you do it. There's even a whole section that the audience will love of us not hearing each other. <laughs> no, I'll leave that in. Or I won't yeah, yeah. leave that in. I'll cut that oh. out. Fair enough. No, well, I'll cut. It, just... I'll cut it out when we can't like communicate. But if like again, like you have to really, you're gonna have to really like petition for me to cut something out. Otherwise, I understand. I understand. You're gonna have to start an ad campaign. Listen, I, I do think that it's really fair to assume that Edward is far more depressed than anybody else in this movie. I really do. He's easily the mopiest person. Right. In the, he thinks in he's going to hell. Movies. I get it. Yeah. I get that he's he's depressed outside of Bella. The idea is he had when she met him, he was depressed, and then she gave him a reason to live, and then he like thinks he's no good for her, so right. he's like trying to go away. Right. I, I get. That's I bad. do get that. It's bad news. He's still uh, like all right. I feel like we're holding him to a really high standard compared to everybody else to in this well, movie because he's a hundred and fucking nine. So that means he's got to be good. I think that. I think that he has to be more responsible than the 18-year-old. I totally agree with that. And by the way, by I don't think he's a good guy. One, I'm not saying, step I'm not saying one, he is. Don't date the 18-year-old. Stay away from the 18-year-old. Well, what's You're he per- supposed to do? What's he supposed to do if he's trapped in a 17-year-old body? Legit, what's he supposed to do? I don't know. He could Lie? fuck weird old perverts. He could, he could definitely date somebody who's 25. Yeah. So I guess that's what Bam. he should be doing, right? Problem dating solved. 25 year olds Still makes him kind of a weirdo, I think. I mean, I don't know. The, the, this is a whole question of dating people who are a different age than you. I, I honestly do think that age kind of matters until a certain point because I, I think it I just too. has to do with experience and how you're you're going through life, and and it's it's unfair to both people in a relationship because totally. it's just different stages in someone's life. It's 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 not that one. It's not necessarily that like yeah, like like it, once you're over like you know it, I like. It's a generalization because I'm sure there are 16 year olds out there who are smarter than me. But generally speaking, I think like in your 20s, you still got stuff to figure out. Um, your 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 learning curve and what life's about tends to sort of flatten out after after you're in your right. mid 30s till you're 60 ish, 65. Yeah, and when you're and when you're a teenager, you're still figuring stuff out, and it's totally. better to figure that out with people your age who are also figuring that out. Um, and that's why we have, you know, laws and stuff. I totally uh, agree. And because, yeah, uh, older people can then prey on younger people and use that vulnerability in their lives to get weird sex stuff. Um, and so, just, like, Bella's 17 when he meets her. Uh, and he's 100 and, I guess, 8 at that point. Uh, yeah, totally. And, you know, that's a bummer. I think that's a bummer, too. Uh, I think the what it means, essentially, is... For him to satisfy our moral uh, floor, he has to never date anybody, really. No, I disagree with that. I think he could date people in their 30s or whatnot. Like, I How, think, But they can't date him because he looks 17. Yeah, that's a problem for him. Yeah, it's a huge problem for him. It it's, is, I mean, you know, yeah, he's still I guess, a person. Yeah, I guess. I mean, no, no, he can fuck other vampires. Well, that's the thing. He's limited to vampires, which means... What he should do is is create a mate, Look, and yet he's too moral to do that. Yeah. See, this is the problem. I'm not. I'm not saying that he's. I'm. I'm playing devil's advocate here. No, it's I don't a think very interesting. Look, there's a lot of philosophy, a lot of questions, a lot to go sure. into with the Twilight films. Yeah, this, um, this is a, of morality here. This is packed with Grecian myth and I, like all. I think. I, yeah, I think he's in a pickle. He's in a real pickle. I don't think the answer is is going after a 17 year old. It seems like the worst thing he could do, yes. probably, out of all of his choices. Yeah, because even if he went for like someone in their 30s, um, and they knew, they knew he was a vampire, yes, the public would be like, whoa, that's fucked up, but it's still like a sound relationship between them, no matter what people, other people 
think. And yes, it's still like a problem. He's still like way older than that person. Sure. Um, and she looks like she's dating someone way younger than her. There's a lot of problems there. H- how old is she supposed also, to be? Also, and we talked about this in the first one. Like, wh- why would he even want to date teenagers? Why would we? He want to be in high school? Like, what is going on with him? Well, the question is like, how long has it been since he last had uh, a, a relationship? Like, what if he? What if this was his first foray since he got into vampiredom? I don't we know. Don't he- I mean, we never I, hear about exes. This we is never why hear it's a weird cult it. thing, too, because like he calls that guy his dad, and it's like he's not his dad, right? The the movie definitely. It's sets like if up- I kept like I called you my son all the time, and like made you call me dad, and was like that's the relationship we have, which you've begged me to do off, yeah, off I know. Mike many times. I know. And the answer is no, Dave. Sweet mate, the answer is we'll, no. We'll keep talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> little pushes. Yeah, you're little gonna use the old step. Jacob approach. Baby steps. Yeah, just maul me with the constant in the constant refusal to listen. Right, but uh, it's I just was, I will I say I can't he's, get past it. I can't get past. And that's fair, and that's but, why with Jacob, it's like I don't. You know, the violent stuff is very iffy. He clearly is try. He's not trying to hurt her. It's it's it's. I don't know. It might be a little like prejudice to assume all werewolves have that problem some of them might be able to co- to to control their anger so i don't want to judge though. jacob based on his species because that's you know that's wrong uh and and so like that's why i'm like i'm more for jacob because he's her fucking age and he's also trying to figure shit out and she can be there with you know and they're they're both at the same age and they, they can it's just less creepy and weird it feels like she's preyed upon with Edward because of his age that he can be he's past a certain point that she needs to go through. You've reduced the entire debate about this that. to age, by the way. You've yeah. reduced the entire thing to that. Uh, well, again, gun to my head, I have to pick one of them. I understand. Uh, so and I, I'm not going to argue that the age thing is not acceptable. Uh, I think that Jacob's violent tendencies are very clear. It's very clear he has violent tendencies and he's possessive. Right, uh, and, he just and became intrusive. a werewolf, though. So, what's the difference? That means, oh, like, so give him fifty years till he figures it out. Well, this is the moment where she is the same age as him, and he's trying to date her. So, like, I agree if he wants to go for five years and figure out the ropes, like, all good. But also, right. I think the whole point of introducing well, he, that he woman, also is responsible enough to say, "I can't be near you." I think I, I I don't trust myself. Correct. Which they both do. They yes. both do that. You know? Uh, so to me, it's like, are they really that different? I guess the, the difference in your mind is the age thing. To me, Edward has been very clear that he's not physically abusive. Like, I think he's been very clear about not that. Not yet. No, I come on, know. man. I, th- but I not know. yet means it was, is everybody, if that's, if that's the standard well, we're going to use. Well, I mean, use. his friend keeps trying to eat her. And he keeps stopping him. Yeah. He's got he weird possession issues. I know he's... He's 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 more like he's definitely um, got the intense. I will never hurt you. I'll never let you get hurt. I'm here to protect you. I don't think he respects her boundaries at all. He goes right in her room all the time. Well, neither. He did. called her. Why did he call her dad? That what was, was weird. That? It's I fucking weird. That was weird. Um, and that's I get I get that. Um, see, I don't think that Jacob showed any signs that he would physically harm her. Other than his like weird rage spirals that he gets into, he all did the time. it towards that guy. I, Doesn't do. It's definitely, it, it's definitely a it's a problem that they need to figure out. Um, but he wolfed by her. Remember when he wolfed right by her? Yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't do anything. He said sup. He said sup and kept going. I just have more confidence in Jacob because of his age, um, and because he's a nicer guy, uh, and because he's. He's, I don't know, he's just as self-aware as Edward. He also respects her privacy more so far. He asks before mm. he jumps in her window. Well, he's always watching her, by the way. And he claims behind the scenes that they were boyfriend and girlfriend all the time to his friends. He's real Before he, they he, actually yeah, are. Yeah, and he lurched out of the woods the first time we met him. He's been he, watching he's her He's not without bunch. his problems. Well, he's, he's stalking her. He's been stalking her for two movies. Right, That's but so is, so is Edward. But he's no, no, Edward never stalked her. Uh, he Edward, said Edward, he told her he watches her sleep. He watched her. She she saw when, him in her room before they started dating. 
when they were oh that does happen once yeah, you're right but that was keeps, when they were dating he, though when he was watching like her sleep. her boogeyman he's baba duking the shit out of her <laughs> He is doing that. I totally yeah. agree. But he is a specter on her life. I guess my. I, I mean, I'm trying to be contrary. Jacob just because wants I, to play fucking froth and shit and not wear a shirt. No, he doesn't. He no, no, no. Froth. You're you're He's minimizing froth. what this guy is. You're absolutely minimizing what Again, this guy there, is. I know you're. I know you. For the sake of this podcast, uh, Edward has to be represented, and I apologize if you feel like you don't want to be on Edward's side. Uh, I don't. I don't love being on Team Edward, but I also. I, I, I don't, don't like really, either of them. I don't like either. Of these I don't fucking, like Jacob at all. I don't like Jacob at all. I think he has more potential to be a violent, abusive person know, both than a Edward does. Of jabronis, like that. I just. I'm yeah. not. I'm not into them. I want Bella to just say, "Yeah, fuck all this. This is weird. Why I'm I'm supposed to be like going to college and shit, and so I'm dealing with werewolves and vampires. Fuck this." All three of those are bad endings. I, like there is no good ending to this series. I think like, the good I, ending is is Bella finally because Bella. All right, Bella is not without her faults. Uh, uh, no, definitely not. But she's our protagonist, and no one is without their faults. And I get it. Sure. She's, she sees two 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 slabs of meat there, two two hunks, yeah. uh, and she's she's digging on it. She's into it. She doesn't want to pick. Uh, she's at a buffet. Well, she's already picked. She's at a meat she buffet. Picked Edward. Um, she picked Edward, though. Yeah, she was she was dipping her hand in, in no, Jacob. No, absolutely not. She was testing not. the waters. Absolutely not. She was never testing the waters. She was 100%. I mean, she does say time. it's always been Edward um, yes. at the end. And but I think it's very I think, clear. I think when she thought Edward had broken up with her officially, I think she... Because she gets to that point where she's writing to to what's her name um alice and being like i'm feel better with jacob i'm i'm doing better so i don't know i think i i, I don't believe i think there was minute. a world in which if edward didn't come back her and jacob would have fucking had a life together that movie that's a movie world where over time uh you know love fades and then you just settle for a person that you also kind of love well, but who's also, around. here's the other thing is i and again maybe this is a prejudice towards uh, like an ageist thing, but I don't think any of uh, I don't think any of their fucking feelings are real. I don't either because I don't understand why. I Which, don't by think the anybody way, falls in a deep forever love, really at any I, point in their life, but especially not as a teenager. I'm not saying people can't get married at a young age and then stay together and have a great marriage. I'm just saying that life is is very long when you're that age. Uh, that's true for the most part. I, uh, I guess my counter, I, my counterpoint is, I do think Edward falls in pretty heavy. I don't know, Ed, man. He's a hundred nine. I don't Edward's, know what's going on Edward's, in his head. Stop it! <laughs> stop his it, elderly Dave. head. Let me fucking defend him and stop, stop, stopping me, Dave. You okay, monster. Okay, okay, okay. So look, Edward makes massive sacrifices all the time to keep her. Like, all the time, right? His own guilt he has to set aside. His own sort of future he has to set aside. He has tried to save her from himself, I don't know how many times, which is not doesn't make him noble. It at least makes him honest. He's definitely he has not to, noble. No, he endangers his family. Uh, yeah. And now he's willing, he's, in, he's taking his own life uh, in his own hands to make her a vampire. Because, uh, because once he does that, he's in danger from the werewolves. And again, he thinks uh, this is eternal damnation. Yes, he does. So, like, and he's so, you know, done everything he can do here's to stop it. Here's a question. It. Yeah. If becoming a vampire, the, all right, if you knew for sure that makes you hellbound, yeah. how could you possibly not let the vampires kill Bella? Well, what if, he, what if everybody's going to hell? I don't know. That's, I guess it's a possibility. Well, of course it is. But, like, if... I mean, this is the thing that always happens in these movies where they're like, I know a hell exists, so clearly a heaven must exist. Right, of And course. therefore, I found my faith again. Um, and so I assume Edward, if Edward thought everybody's going to hell, he would have no problem with that. But he clearly thinks if she becomes a vampire, she is damned. So would she has he no think, chance like, of I'd rather her die pure than eternal damnation? Well, I think you're assuming that if she dies now, she would go to heaven. Which right, we I don't, don't know, know what she's this... done. We don't know who she's killed <laughs> right. in her own we time. I mean, which it's not impossible that she's and got I'm a body just talking about, I'm her. just talking about this world, like uh, like pushing uh, religious conversations aside. In this I know world, you are. there's apparently the, evil. 
But that's the point that I'm making. I'm not trying to put religious conversations right, on this. That's, I'm saying, I mean, that's the moral debate because Bella is like, I don't fucking believe it. So I guess in that sense, he's respecting her wishes. Definitely. He's not a complete monster he's to like, her. Right. You know, the monstrous thing that he did was starting the relationship. But if he really thinks that, it would, dri- it would drive him nuts. That's what I think we're about to see. Okay. Right? I, I mean, I don't know what... To me, I don't, it seems... I do not think we're about to see that because I do not I think know. this this series is that with it. I can't figure out what the next three should be about given this. I, I, I feel like it's what's likely is that we're going to start putting the relationship on the back burner and there's larger conflicts, right? Between the two peoples. You'd think that would be what would happen, right? Or I guess maybe it's like this time they're engaged and we actually get their relationship I, movie. Right, here's and they, the thing. I thought that's what this movie was going to be. Me so too. now I'm like, I don't know, man. What if it's five movies just about relationships? <laughs> uh, honestly, I wouldn't sure. mind that. I wouldn't either, but I want them to be more interesting. Yeah. I, right? Again, I want a mummy in play. I want a sexy mummy yeah. in play. I mean, yeah, dude. I want all the, all the spooks and there. ghouls. Yeah. 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 Get a mummy in there. Yeah. Van yeah, Helsing I mean, should show up. Oh, a, a hunter? Blade. Yeah. A yeah, hunter yeah, a would hunter. be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, obviously witches should be in there if we're going to, you know. Yeah, we could get some witchcraft in there. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Get a, Put them all in. Maybe she just, maybe she like upgrades and does a, does a season with, with, with Mr. Faust. Like just straight up dates the devil for a season. Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? Fuck <laughs> it. Why not? Like a cool, you know? like a young, sexy devil. Oh, who doesn't sure. quite know who he is, right? And he's you know, like, f- yeah. We get a redhead love interest, you know, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. sort of a. He's kind of you know, oh yeah, yeah. He he rides on a skateboard. He's all in red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like a character right out of Tony Hawk, but he's also sexy. Right, he's like Spider Man, but without yeah. with without instead of Spider, it's it's, just, it's Satan <laughs> Satan Man. <laughs> he's just shooting a pitchfork, yeah, grappling yeah, yeah. from wall to wall. Yeah, yeah, fighting yeah. the green goblin. Sure. Um, I mean, does 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 everyone have to appear in the form of a guy her age for her to date them? Is that the I, rules? Well, I hope so. I hope the movie gives us at least that. You'd right? think, but like, I also think there's something to be said for like dating a Poseidon or something. Like, just an older guy teaches her some things. Uh, like I mean, a merman. she's already dating an older guy. I, but I, he just might looks be she's like a seventeen-year-old. This is all. This is all madness. This is all. She might have a taste I for feel, it. I feel. I constantly feel like I'm gonna be on some FBI list just for watching these fucking movies because <laughs> they feel they feel wrong. They yeah, they're I just agree. like, oh Jesus, this is gross. I, I, um, it's not only they feel wrong; they feel so uh, just senseless. Right. So the last they, thing I want is just some like hairy chest Willem Dafoe in oh. in the lighthouse to to. Oh. To fucking to tag into this fucking mess, Bella, uh, you'll be sleeping sound tonight when I'm <laughs> done with you. Can you imagine? Uh, oh. No, I can't imagine. Yeah, you can. You I can refuse see it, to Dave. imagine. You can see it, Dave. No, I know you can see it. You got the future sight, bro. <laughs> that's my vampire power. <laughs> you got it. That's your power. The future yeah. fucking sight. You know, just wanting to see stuff. Uh, a- I have no idea what the fuck the next movie is. No uh, idea. Okay, it's it's eclipse. But, that but like implies, I have no idea what to predict. All right, new moon. Here, let's go from this. I'm ready. Yeah. New moon is okay. There's a new there's a new player in new town. New boy in town. New boy and in that's town. That's the werewolf. That's Jacob. New moon and it's moon yeah. related. Eclipse yeah. is the moon and the sun colliding. But the moon eclipses the sun. The moon t- like outshines the sun. I don't think they're thinking that far into the meaning. Okay. I think it's a war. I do think it's a war between the the vampires and the werewolves. So and does I do she think get she's engaged? on Edward's side, but it's like a real like, don't hurt Jacob. I care about Jacob. So she's like getting him. She crams herself in between this war. This must be. I feel like this is also a weird thing where it's like this vampire council. They're like, who is this? And they're like, it's it's like this guy's girlfriend. She's a person. Right. I don't know why she's right. involved in our business. Totally. I don't know why we haven't killed her yet. I don't know what's going on. Why this teenager 
is just involved in our centuries old affairs. The vampire world feels like a feels like a three bedroom apartment that six frat people are sharing. Right. It's just like um, nobody knows who that person is, yeah. but they're all like, "All right, I guess you live here." So I think the next film's going to be Underworld with again a teenager just cramming herself in the business of it, and I think she's going to be trying to be like protecting Jacob but loving Edward and it's, it's that last scene we saw where she's standing between them and says, you can't hurt me. I think it's that the movie. And I think it's going to be all romantic love triangle. I think that'll be settled. And I think breaking Dawn is when their marriage would happen and a baby. Cause I do know, I'm pretty sure they know there's a baby. Yeah. And so I think that's going to be breaking Dawn, you know, a new, that's the only ones that go, right. There's, I don't believe, uh, New Moon, Eclipse, and then Breaking Dawn 1 and 2, I believe. So Breaking I'm, Dawn, I think, will be that. And then I think it'll be completing the vampire stuff. And the werewolves yeah. have to join with the vampires. Oh. They form a union um, to save the day. And Jacob and Edward form a respect for each other at that point. Because where else would you go? They form a well, respect. They become two powerful allies. And Jacob goes off and, and, and has, at this point, they, there's some other budding romantics thing for Jacob because we're going to sure. end on Edward and Bella. Yes. I think that's it. I think they'll be like, they'll, it'll be the ending of Harry Potter where they're all friends and they're all, they've defeated some bigger evil. And two of them ended up together. Yeah. Or they, yeah. or it's like, yeah, the end of Sense8 and everybody just fucks. Everybody. Like, like everybody. <laughs> the dad, like the, the other friends. It's just yeah. an absolute mess. Charlie's, Char- no Charlie one's happy. Is no, not, going to town not the on audience. Yeah. Vampire Wife. Just yeah. Vampire Wife and Charlie have a whole sequence. I do think the dad's going to find out and get involved at some point, right? Yeah, he has to. Otherwise, why is he there? I yeah. totally agree. Or, uh, oh, bummer prediction, her dad's going to get killed. That seems like a, a way to go. I think it's her mom being killed might be more interesting. Yeah, well, because we don't know her. Well, and she's also, not a character. We've met her. Uh, yeah, we've I met her like on the phone and junk. She comes, she pops into the film like, "Hi, honey, make a scrapbook of your vampire friends." <laughs> We're using a okay, camera that will never go out of style. That camera will always be useful. Yeah, that's that's uh, my role. Okay, see ya. She doesn't even have a voice. She's just represented through the wishes of her father. (laughs) Yeah. It's like he killed her and he's trying to pretend she's still alive. No kidding. Yeah. Like he's doing a real. uh, Mom wants a scrapbook. He's doing a weekend at Bernie's situation with her mom. Yeah. 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 (laughs) In terms of presents and dead wives. Yeah. So look, I agree with everything. you. I definitely think that Bella and Edward stay together at the end of this. Like yeah. I, th- I think that's where we're going, but it's not going to be an interesting series unless Jacob wins in this next movie. You I know, agree. Like, uh, right? He has to. I agree that it's not going to be interesting. Okay, so I maybe don't know he if it, he is going to win, but I agree. He's got to have a real moment. I agree with that Bella. they'll they'll watch Half Blood Prince and they'll be like, "Oh, we need like a thing where like there's a downer." Well, uh, this isn't like a, a this is new down- idea. It'll be the downer ending. It'll be the it'll be the Empire. Did Ezra you watch Sex and the City? Did you ever watch Sex and the City, Dave? I only watched a few episodes and I found it fucking riveting. And I it's need not, to go it's back not bad. and watching. Well, it's, it's HBO. Great, Every HBO show is has that standard of quality. Where like it was I felt like it was like a stereotype that Sex and the City was dumb. And I watched a couple episodes and I was like, oh no, it's it, it's an HBO show. It's very it's good. It's dated. It's dated and it's not always good. But okay. I will say this. The thing uh, Sex and the City ends up devolving into exactly the same situation as like Twilight. Like a werewolf vampire battle? Uh, like a, yes. Didn't wow. you know? Uh, but also a, a love triangle. Like ultimately the series turns into a love triangle for the main character. Sounds exhausting. Uh, where one character is clearly the guy and the other character is sort of a foil who ends up sort of having his day, but it doesn't, it's never meant to be. Right. There was... I think... I think that has to happen with Jacob for this to matter. Yeah. Remember when Pirates of the Caribbean thought that they could convince us that there was a love triangle between Jack Sparrow, Elizabeth, and Will Turner? I, I have to tell you, I don't know if it's because I needed to remember names of students or what, but like Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm like Teflon. I don't remember fucking anything about that. You shove that one like, right out of your brain? That, that one, that's like paint that slid right off me. It's like water-based paint I gotta and tell I was already you, I wet. I don't blame you. I would argue that the first movie is very good, 
The second movie is actually pretty good, and the third yeah. movie's okay. And then you 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 need not watch anything else after that. I don't think I have watched anything else after that. The first movie is quite good, and I liked it a lot. Uh, but it's been a very long time, and uh, my impression was fastened very quickly of that movie because I walked into that movie. I don't know if you remember this, but mostly it was mothers watching it in the first like week in the mornings and stuff. What? What? Remember, it was like moms and kids. They brought kids to that movie. It was like a PG movie. I don't think that's like a common memory of all the mothers, the swarms of mothers. I, okay, well, maybe it's just because I went to an, a morning showing. It was I went definitely to an 11- like a, more of a kid's movie than we realize. Yeah. It's kind of the last of that style, like the Goonies and like Indiana yes. Jones, where it's like, it's for, for kids, but it's also kind of grim. And I would not blame anybody younger than me for having that same nostalgia for it that I do for like Indiana Jones. Sure. You know what I sure, mean? Sure. I, so I walked into that theater at 11 a.m. when the mothers were there with the kids. Sure. And the first, the first beat of it was a mournful dirge version of Yoho. That's the was third like some, movie. Nope. First movie. Nope. First movie has a sad version of Yoho right up top. Oh, the little girl, and then they, yes. and then she sees yes. everything burnt. Yes. Let's just go through the whole plot. Let's uh, let's talk about this. <laughs> I laughed my ass off at that sad version of Yoho. It is very and funny. I, I got nuclear gazes from those moms. They were fucking furious. Well, they at were me having for, a delightful morning with their kids. I'm I, and I understand that, and I understand I'm a bad person. You're I'm the in Edward there in like this fucking, situation. You're in there like like goddamn Robert Mitchum and Kate Fear. <laughs> I'm like, back. I'm definitely like, I am the Edward of the situation, Dave. There's no way around it, right? I'm definitely the evil guy, but like, I'm getting stares, and it's like, yo, yo, how is fucking funny? I don't want to hear any of your shit. This is funny. I know what funny is. Fuck you. Uh, I didn't say any of that to the kids, but I thought it, Dave. Right? Was that Mitchum? Was that scene in the Mitchum Cape Fear? I know it's I obviously or, or in just the, the um... Simpsons one. <laughs> What? It's the De Niro scene. That's the most common one. Yeah. Uh, where he's smoking the cigar. I feel like I should have went with De Niro for that reference. You should have. Uh, I'm sorry, I tried everyone. To... I, 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 to, I forget if there's if Mitchum has the cigar scene, and the, the, I think that one's a lot more. Uh, it's not. It's not an exact remake. Yeah. Yeah. So I got. I got. A, this is the first. I just briefly, I want to look back at this movie from Personal Shopper. And oh uh, yeah. It, right, like, and from Lighthouse. What did we call that segment again? I don't think we did. D- Try fight? Is that what Twi fight? I don't remember what we called it. Uh, oh. It had a great name, and we agreed with it. Uh, so, <laughs> did we agree on it? We did. <laughs> we did. I sent you a text about it. Okay, and you sent and you sent back perf. You wrote the phrase perf, perf at me. That yeah, sounds P E R F. I've been trying to make um, <laughs> my sister gets mad at this. I'll I'll use delish a lot. Oh my god! That's I've never delish. heard you dare. I got that. I got her kids saying it, which is like a f- small victory for me. Wow! They'll say that meal was delish, mom, and it's delish. like ah oh, yeah, I got in there. I got them early. I got them saying delish. You're like shredder. For the rest just of their corrupting lives. kids. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you just you just corrupting kids for That's your skateboard all. gang. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh anyway, I think that I think personal shopper Kristen Stewart can connect to this role. Like I feel like this is a direct bridge to personal shopper. Do yeah, you? it does feel like she could be the same character. Yeah, this feels like a bridge to that. Like, okay, we're getting somewhere now. Uh Robert Pattinson I think he just like I love was, that. Are we gonna go with Robert Pattinson Lighthouse? Because I yes. just realized both of their like we've graduated into indie cinema is both two films where they're both masturbating like weirdos. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. why we picked it because it's sexual awakening and it's like but they're alone and stuff. It's way better. Yeah, yeah, they're both kind uh, of yeah about isolation. A hundred percent. So <laughs> everybody so see I, personal shopper in the lighthouse. Just throwing that out there. Both you need to if you're gonna watch if you're gonna listen to this yeah. uh, podcast. You need it's really a thick glaze that yeah, covers all of our commentary. Yeah, that's gonna be homework. That's necessary yeah. <laughs> reading uh, for this. That's you're gonna need that. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna need some personal shopper. And Get some, that some lighthouse. Yeah. You, I, honestly, you're gonna need to watch those more than you're gonna want to need t- <laughs> the, the, the the Twilights. Like you may never need to watch Twilight to listen to this podcast. Unclear. I, yeah, I doubt it. Right, I don't think so. I hope uh, people aren't what I hope people aren't watching them to ke- to keep up with these. I don't know. I have this thing right. where I watch a uh, when I listen to a podcast about a movie, I tend to watch the movie because I just want to have the full a context. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure, 
uh, about the, I don't know why you wouldn't watch Twilight to listen to this podcast. I don't know what kind of maniac you are blue balling this. I don't mm-hmm. understand that, but but sure, you know, go for it. Right. Uh, anyway, my this is my theory. I think that Robert Pattinson, the vampire, since we know he can ghost uh, and like throw his body from place to place, I think he just went forward in time and lived out the lighthouse the entire time that he was not present on screen. He just did a quick lighthouse. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. That's what he was up to. He was doing the yeah. lighthouse. Yeah. He was just like, what if I'm a wiki? No one can tell me what for. I don't have yeah. to deal with any. I don't have to deal with any. He runs into this Defoe fella and he's like, God oh, damn it. Yep. Yep, and that's why he comes back and he's suicidal because there's just no solution. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or, yeah. or this is how he became a vampire, the lighthouse. I, I mean, Does we've seen work? a fictional version of it, but it's not impossible. I don't know. It's one. I, mean, maybe, not, I don't know. Maybe uh, when when does the lighthouse take place? Is it around the Spanish flu? Is it a hundred years? Before it's, this it's the eighteen somethings. It's the late eighteen hundreds. Right, I want to say it's off of Maine. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely off the east coast. Yeah. I don't, I don't think know. He I could, don't know if I can place Edward around that. I don't think you're allowed to be like a Captain Ahab figure in the in the 20th century. Like I yeah. think they've just straight up outlawed that. Yeah, I feel like now you'd just be a hipster, right? People would just what? be like, uh, "Cut I the just, shit, man." I just don't think you're allowed to have that much salt in you. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, I guess. Like not even, a, not I've even met like some a salty ass people. I don't know. Not even a guy who's trying to forest way, gump his way across America. I do America think, like, I think if you're like a boat, a boatsman, and you're boating around and you run into some motherfucker doing that, I'd be like, yeah, cut the shit, man. Like, cut right. the shit. Right. And that's not an acceptable way to do anything now. No, not at all. Right. Whereas I think Robert Pattinson, the way he is, you can accept that out of your boatsman. In the in the lighthouse. Yeah, and he kind of just acts like a guy. It's very funny. Like, he doesn't seem that old-timey in that. He's definitely, a, like, a new... Well, we've had this conversation for about an hour and 44 minutes, but, like, uh-huh, he... Uh-huh. he I don't uh, remember, but yeah. We can do it again. Yeah, it's no problem. Uh, he's definitely, like, a new generation dealing with his Captain Ahab bullshit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He does. He calls him out. This is... We shouldn't talk about the... I don't want to... We shouldn't. I don't want to spoil the lighthouse. I don't um, either. The point is that Robert Pattinson, like, I think he's manifested the inner life of Edward in that movie yeah for, like that's where we are here yeah i think so because otherwise what the fuck I'm is waiting edward for doing edward to see a seagull and be like ah and run towards it that's it yep that's yeah. it maybe the seagull is like his memory of edward's life right uh did you say otherwise edward, what are we doing here because i don't do- <laughs> fucking know that's <laughs> what, a hell what are of we a doing question. in rio you know what i mean like i like in he's rio? in rio de janeiro right wouldn't you if you're a vampire I, I assume he's been around the world. He's 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 lived 109 years. He's gone around setting up these weird pervert things where he dates high school kids. Uh, and so uh, he probably went to Rio and was like, this is I like this area. This is all right. And then that's where he goes. That's his that's his emo like journey. That's his emo uh, uh, promise land where he's like, this is where I go when I'm when I'm all emo. I go to Rio and crush my cell phone in I an apartment. Guess. Which That's, my but, this is again okay, okay, okay. What's in, but he's not going to blend in o- Rio. I don't want to open up this can of worms. He's not going to blend in anywhere. He he's can go to fucking in, England. Maybe, maybe he Norway. can maybe go to England. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. If anything, though, yeah, I don't know. Um. I was going to say he could go somewhere with. I don't know. It. it all right. All right. All right. I'm ready, Dave. The fact that he goes to Rio and gets like an apartment. And he's yes, he just does. there means that he understands that he doesn't have to live like a teenager. Alice right. even says, like, I don't talk to him much. So why the fuck were they doing that? I don't why know. were they pretending? Why does the guy keep saying he's my son and they live in a house together and they make rules and he tells and they do birthday parties and like they say, ah, now, now, kids, get along. What fucking fetish are they living out in that house? That they can also just take breaks from it, and he's going to be like, nah, I'm just going to go to Rio and bum around like an adult, because that's what I am. You think, like, you think they have, like, uh, like sort of those, those old Dionysian orgies in that house, where they just, like, look for today, all the rules are off. Yeah. All right? So, like, anybody who's down for anybody else, don't care, go out in the woods, You're take nuts. care of it. We're vampires. We, right. There's no rules. Right, that's like the only way this is a sustainable living yeah. situation. 
We're we're blood demons. We transcend morality, and we're pretending to be the goddamn Brady Bunch for no good reason. Right. It seems like it does seem like a vampire life is it should be a Highlander life, right? Yeah. There's something very wrong going on with that family, and Bella should should stay away. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, it 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 yeah. It does seem like a Highlander. And Highlander, he keeps making up new identities. He keeps killing himself, like quote unquote, killing himself, like for in on paper, and then making a new identity. That's how they handle it. Highlanders are going to have problems in the digital age. All of these motherfuckers are going to have problems once like people are paying attention. Well, right. Once there's a computer that's looking at stuff. The way I thought of it is, what if I think I propose this as Highlander, is like if the government goes to you and they're like, hi. So we know you're like a hundred and a hundred and three years old. Right. And we would like to have a conversation with you. And if you could just be like, look, I'm unkillable vampire. How about you just stay out of my way and I won't kill anybody or maybe I will. What are you going to do about it? I I just kill you right now. Get out of my house. And the government is like, you got it, dude. And then they leave. There's no way. There's no way the government backs. Like the government, the government does what they do with every single unknown threat. They're like, okay, we're going to bring as much force as we need to bring all the way up to we will nuke your house. We I'm will playing, do that. I'm, I'm playing wish fulfillment. There is that. That's what needs to happen. The government just needs to be like, okay, I don't think we can deal with these vampires. We should probably just let them be. Um, and I know that happens in some versions of vampire stuff. I think, I, I, it, it, but it's but it's basically impossible to imagine just because the power of knowing how to replicate it, right? You, you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine? Like, for instance, and I say this with like, you know, not trying to get into a total diversion. Can, there's like eighty eighty percent of presidents would absolutely become vampires. Right, oh, like eighty percent so? of oh fuck yeah they would because they would then entertain the idea I could stay president forever. It takes well, you have to be a maniac have to be a president. Limits. We still have Dude. term limits, but I again, don't think. I, all right, look, how long do you think that racket would last before America would be like? I think the president's a vampire. I don't know. I you know like this. You know, the last four years have made me ask some questions, Dave. I think I'm not sure. President vampire. I I think we would question that even if they started to like Putin it and get like more terms and shit i think we'd be like okay this isn't like a keanu reeves meme anymore someone has to stab a stake through this guy's heart yeah i mean but that's how every vampire's life ultimately ends isn't it? i think i think every president uh especially this one not that i want to get into it i knew uh, yeah right they they rely heavily off of old people wanting things to stay the way it is and, and also if you're not a vampire, questions. you're going to you better be fucking you better stick with the times if you're vampire president, because otherwise the millennials or whatever we're calling them are going to knock on your door and they're going to stake you right through the goddamn heart. And there's nothing you can do about it because all your allies, your your Mitch McConnell's will be dead unless you make them all vampires. And then that's a whole different problem. It is. A whole, but it's also one vampire that you can Congress, imagine them taking. You can imagine them taking it, though. Yeah, here's the like thing. What kind of vampire are we talking about? Because if it's traditional, then we can just be like, look, all right, we'll be out here doing whatever we want during the day, and you can't fucking stop us, you right, vampire right, right. motherfuckers. Well, they would just wear a burqa or something. Come on, this is a solvable problem. Uh, it doesn't seem... I mean, in Blade, they were, they were um, bicycle helmets. And then and took care of it, right? Yeah, and then you just pull the stuff off, and you go, Vampire! And you hose them down. You hose them right down. I mean, you know, but it's, it's the same as having like, like a space If we're on. dealing with a vampire Congress, uh, we have bigger problems. Well, that but see again, I think if the, it's just a vampire, of, if it's just but, a vampire uh, president, I I don't think that could last. I don't think that's no, no, a sustainable it, system. It has to be a group decision. I totally agree with that. But I'm just saying that if you could if you could orchestrate it with a like a group of people that were in power, I think they would try it. I really do. I think they would try it. They'd, they'd go for vampire president? Yeah. No, if, no, 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 no. You mean no, if no, I'm the saying... government found out about vampires, their first instinct. So, okay, what you're proposing is that I'm, yep, government I'm discovers ready. they're vampires. Yeah. And they go, ha ha, finally, yep. we can have a vampire president. That's what the, that's what the next stage would be in no, no, discovery no, I, of vampire. 
there's a good six months where they're like, we should responsibly research this. But I think inevitably, like, there's going to be a that's person where, who's in that's charge. That's where it's all heading. That's where the government's all heading towards vampire well, president. Yeah, let's become vampires. Do you vampires. think if we saw, if we met a werewolf, would we then say we need a werewolf president? No, because I don't think werewolf has any advantage to somebody who wants to maintain power but in why its would current we, form. The government, why would the Pentagon be like, all right, let's work on vampire? I don't think we tell the president. I don't think the president would get involved. No, nah, I, I, I disagree. I think you're a little short sighted there. I think that's a thing that you can imagine somebody telling the president that. You can totally imagine that. All right. If we found aliens, would we be like, let's get an alien in the White House? No, because an alien doesn't necessarily. I, I maintain get why, the status quo forever. I get You're being short sighted about this. I get this. why the president would want to be a vampire. Yes. The same way anybody would. But right. I don't get why it would become our government's, one of our government's goals to because have a the vampire pres- president. The president would find out about it and would want a piece of it. And they'd and say like, no. They'd say no, sir. You can't become a vampire. Why the f- under what fucking jurisdiction, bro? Who's going to stop him? Are you I, kidding? Are you I, watching what's going on right now? There's well, no fucking way. First of There's all, no the way. vampires have to weigh in on it, right? Not if they're captured. This is what I'm telling you, you can't man. Make a this vampire is... make be, you make you uh, turn you into a vampire. Are, they have are to you bite sure? You. They have to bite you and do a thing. They have uh, to dude, make I think you drink you're. Their, I guess. I guess you could extract their blood and do some sort of process. Exactly, Dave. You're being really naive here. This is this is fucking naive, Dave. Right, I still don't it, understand why the goal would be vampire president. I. You know what I do get vampire army if we were like oh we want our military to be vampires well see i don't i think that it'd be harder to sell a bunch of people doing that unless they did it unknowingly like they signed up to the military and they I were think doing vampire it. president would be kind of hard. Not, i don't know i think if you put out a notice and said join the army become a vampire first of all dave you'd get, you're right, i would be right there knocking on their door like yes please you vampire. would not one fucking, vampire please no, you wouldn't you're full of shit you would not do that number two Wait a minute, because you're railroading me. Let me explain this. I'm not saying the government's objective would be we must have a vampire for president. That's okay. not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is the that's government would begin like researching it. Oh, that's because you're not listening. Okay. Because you're okay. Not, just let me finish, bro. Okay. What would happen is the government would research it, and at some point, not even necessarily the current president, just any president, would hear about that and be like, "I'm going to become a vampire because I see in it a chance." to co-opt this power and stay in power. You can see how the seeds of that would happen. Like, I think once you capture a vampire, you're doomed to one day have somebody try it. I don't know if it'll succeed, but somebody would try it. They're definitely going to try it, but I don't That's think... I mean. It's not like landing on the moon. We, It's not an experiment. It's like, yeah, you, there's vampires. It's, it's actually not hard to become a vampire. So here's what would happen, I think. If the president okay. became a vampire... Because remember, it's let's still use a secret. The, let's use the current political climate. Let's say sure, that Trump sure. became a vampire. I Which, think what by would the way, then happen, he would do that, right? He would do that, sure, right? We agree sure. on that. I okay. think what would then happen, if first of all, if he used his president power to become a vampire, I think then Bernie Sanders would become a vampire as well. Definitely, definitely. And they, they we get a vampire fight between them. I think... The beauty of the president becoming a vampire is that anybody else can then become a vampire and, and challenge. I because think that's the thing. I, a vampire, I, I, what, what will happen is we just get an endless stream of different vampire presidents. One of them I, would see, stake the other through the heart and be like, I'm the president now. And we'd be like, yes. I'm not arguing. Yes. Who's arguing? I, I, that's definitely a possible answer. But I think the way that it would start is the same way the atomic wars started. Right, which is one side would have it, and it would, in theory, be a secret. Right, we test and, it in a field, in, right, in right, Nevada. And like ideally, so Trump's ideal version is he becomes vampire. Nobody knows. Bernie Sanders never finds out about it. I don't it, think it's going to be a nobody stays, knows. I think, uh, all right, if uh, uh, in this specific scenario, I think if the yeah. Pentagon found out about vampires, they'd say, "Do not tell the president." Just this don't. president or any president? This president. I think that would be the that, rule number that one. That makes sense. Yeah, sure. they'd be like, all right, this is staying between us until we can figure it out. Uh, and we're, we're, we're going to wait. We're going to wait until the next guy. Uh, and we're going we're gonna, to, you know, we're going to wait till, till Biden comes okay, in, Biden. which I also don't feel comfortable with vampire Him being knowledge. a vampire? I think it's like Area 51 shit. Or maybe they'll, yeah, like, yeah, they'll yeah. give it to Biden. He'll put it in the president's secret book. 
He'll hide it in the Library of Congress in this special section with the code until Nicolas Cage finds it. <laughs> See, um, to me, the funniest the, the funniest thing is I just did like a cursory search in my mind for people I'd feel comfortable who were president and a vampire. And other than Obama, I don't know if I think of anybody Honestly, else. Honestly, I'm like, not yeah, even maybe comfortable with okay. Obama being a vampire because I don't. I I think most presidents do horrible things in general because he he was less bad. He yeah, seems like he, he has good he did instincts. A lot of stuff too. Obviously, sure, sure. he's re- less bad, but like. I don't. I wouldn't. Com- I wouldn't be comfortable with any president vampire. Period. Oh, I wouldn't vote a vampire. I'm, I'm taking a vampire. hard stance yeah. on this. No president vampire. That's fair. Okay, but president Unless, werewolf. What sorry, if they just hold on. Let me amend be... this. Hold on. Let me amend this. Sure, sure. Unless sure. we all become vampires, then you you gotta have then a who president cares? vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that's just the life you've chosen. That's the that's America now. But that's just the same. I as want it a president is now. that represents the company. The company. The the country as best he can. And if and if he's a vampire, I don't know. Maybe that's prejudice of me now that I think about it. Why can't a vampire be president? Uh, isn't that I mean, like the problem? Isn't that like more, we should be more inclusive? It sounds like you think that vampires are filthy others. That's maybe, what it sounds that's what like I'm saying. Maybe this. me saying this will be in the people will be like, dude, that's fucked up. Why can't he? He's drinking deer blood. Let him be president. And right. like we have pre- we have vampire doctors. We have yeah. vampire yeah. high schoolers. And have you thought about what you're eating? Is it really different than drinking blood, exactly. you monster? You know, I don't eat meat, but I get what you're saying. Where it's like, right. honestly, right. I mean, this is a whole other conversation. Uh, we're officially longer than the movie that we're that talking we're, about. That we're, um, <laughs> that we're destined to have, it seems. Yeah, uh, is that I? And if you think about it, the stuff we do to livestock, systematically slaughtering them, is and uh, obviously, I'm not comparing animals to people or the death of a person to a death of an animal. I'm not PETA. Uh, right. But just the system in which we have in place is much more fucked up than a vampire jumping on someone in the woods and eating them. Like I mean, that's why hunters. That's why hunters are cool because they go out there and they like shoot them and then they dig through their guts and they're like, "This is delicious." And it's like, "Good for you." You fucking tore that animal open and you ate it. The vampires, yeah. uh, unless they're doing some sort of farm system too, then that's also that also sucks. We have no. Well, we only have, we do have that one tourism thing that we saw that is right, the first that evidence. Did feel like a farm. That, it, felt that was like, the point of it. Yeah, that was the point of it. That but felt I will like say in, this: in succession where they have like the hunting, and they just like parade fucking animals out in front of them to shoot. I think that you've made a great point here about animal rights, but I also would say so did far I, from what we've seen. Wait, 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 <laughs> Dave. Wait, just wait for one fucking okay, second, okay, Dave. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But my point is <laughs> that that uh, we don't ever we've seen kind of at this point copious amounts of evidence that vampires don't swiftly kill people they monologue them to death mm-hmm. so like they got to go through a pretty bad death so like are they really that much better than what we're doing to the animals I don't know it depends on what it depends on the animal yeah they aren't shooting us in the woods and then breaking our necks um, right. They're like monologuing and creating a lot of fear and a lot of pain before. Depends it's on over. the vampire. They they don't have. No, it doesn't. It maybe, doesn't. That's what right, I'm telling you. We've if seen they, that. If if we we if we had a vampire president, they could put together like human rights laws about how vampires can and can't kill humans. So it would be way more humane. Right. So again, so this is an argument for let's make Trump a vampire. Well. No, I'm, I think we're just exploring all possibilities here. Sure, I think this I has think been a great. It's think hard tank. to come down hard on this because I don't want to miss anything. It's a discussion. I under, right, I, and, and did you ever do you ever listen to Malcolm Gladwell's uh, revisionist history, Dave? You no. probably don't, right? I can't. Read. So I, I <laughs> it's not. You don't have to read. You fucking alien. It's a podcast. So no, you should you know, listen to. Apparently, yes. I can't listen either. Yeah, that's been a problem. We've noticed that. So mm-hmm. look, uh, you should listen to this season of it because the, he does this whole thing on it about how uh, the Jesuits would explore different moral issues by descending into the particulars. Is that uh, what we're which, doing? That's what you love to do. It's your favorite fucking thing. I thought of you the whole time I was listening to that podcast. Aww. I was like, this is such a Dave way of doing uh moral decisions which i admire by the way i'm not making this i'm not i I know i said dave with derision but that's just a bit Uh, i actually genuinely admire that about you i didn't i did not catch the derision so 
you would have gotten away with it. Is I what just I'm put saying. a little mustard on the Dave. I always do that just for just mm-hmm. for your sake, you know, Dave. I just put a little mustard on it. Anyway, you so put uh, mustard on the Dave. <laughs> I put I will slather you in mustard, my dude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In any case, uh, the the larger point here being that, uh, of course, you don't want to make any rulings because you want to descend into the particulars of every case. You're a real Malcolm Gladwell's podcast Thank thinker. You. Well, I don't think I don't think anything's black and white. Right, I know, I know you, I know you don't think that. I, I, you, I, I we're in an occupation where we have to make a lot of generalizations. Of I had course to do, we do movies on cracked and stuff like that. It, sure. it's, it's how you write headlines. You make a broad, sweeping generalization. It's and how it you always get clicks. Bugs me. Right. But it, you know, because the world is complex. So, like, not all vampires are going to be the same. So, when you say a vampire president, that could mean a lot of things. It, it could, but I also think. Uh, uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna dilute everything with particulars, then we're never gonna make any points. Right. Uh, we'll just ramble for two and a half hours like maniacs <laughs> and expect people to listen to us. Right. And expect oh that's right. a podcast. We won't make you'll like concise it. Concise podcast. Yeah, you'll lap that up. About a lap movie that arguably nobody has watched. <laughs> right. while listening this is a to thing this. literally nobody asked us to do. Yeah. We just <laughs> we just decided to do it, At and then people point, decided. Oh yeah, gratuitous. we like it. It's absolutely right. gratuitous, right. and we should be ashamed of ourselves. It's really immoral. Uh, this is yeah. the equivalent. We've doomed the audience to hell, and we didn't ask their permission. We just I bit want them. You, I want you to know my cat's been staring at me this whole time because it's dinner oh, time. Oh, sure. I, and dude, she's I've been like, thinking about dinner for a good... I've been thinking about dinner for a good 20 minutes, but yep. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not bailing first. The sun was and out this- when we started, and now I am sitting <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this at this point, this is a little bit of a, like a who's got the biggest bladder. Like, that's really what we're dealing right. with here. Now it's just a game of chicken. <laughs> I, I haven't had the AC on because I had to record. Yeah. So I'm sweating. I learned how to pee I much have quieter. I removed my pants. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been peeing in the bottles. If you could see me right now, you would you would be uh, horrified yeah, by, your shit what, by how I live. Yeah. Uh, there's. I'm on a messy desk. I have two right. Red Bull cans, both empty. Yeah. Yeah. Your your apartment is probably a Pollock painting, just full of feces. Yeah. And, and I imagine you're also a you know a shame. Oh, I look like I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the very end of Predator, uh-huh. but it's but it's all my feces and blood and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're just covered in it. Yeah. Yeah. Just just a thick coat. So they don't see you. So the Predator doesn't see you. They just. Which they, they don't. Look, they see just, they're like, wow, that mound that looks like a human kind of smells like poop. Yep. Not going to go I, near I that. Definitely, I definitely mud it up over the course of this podcast. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mud it up. Yep. Mm-hmm. That doesn't, out of context of Predator, that is not a thing to say you've done. <laughs> I think it is, though. I think it is. I think we know what it means, though. Okay, I yeah. think we've created it. Yeah. You're going to mud up. TM. <laughs> yeah. I, we're going to have a lot of competitors. We better get on top of that. Yeah. Send this to the Library of Congress, my dude. Get uh-huh. it all trademarked. Right yeah. next to the president's secret book with knowledge of vampires. <laughs> Just trademark, mud it up. Yeah. And then there's a definition underneath it. To smear oneself with one's own feces. Yep. And then our names. <laughs> right there. Stamped. They stamp it? Do they stamp it? I hope they actually just take mug shots of us because we deserve to get arrested. <laughs> it's coming, yeah. right? Two and a half. Yeah. Look, this is the most anybody has ever talked crime. about, and we haven't talked about it. But this is the most time anybody's devoted to the sequel of Twilight, right? I think we're yeah. I think we're the heroes, no. right? <laughs> like, isn't that isn't that what we're saying? No, well, I don't know. Morality is complicated. Right, 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 right. right. You know what we've done we're here someone's, today. We're someone's heroes. What we've yeah. done here today is it's up in the air. It's it's yet to be <laughs> determined. I fucking had it. I had what it. we've Fuck done. You. I just had it, Dave. So what we've done today is a thing. It's uh, who knows what it means. Ah. I had it. I've had it, you nihilist. This could be our this could be our Citizen Kane of podcasting. <laughs> it definitely is. Can yep. you not feel the or gigantic? Or it could be rooms? our Twilight uh, Eclipse. No. Yeah. What did we watch? Or Citizen New Moon. What's yeah. my name? New New Moon. New Moon. Yeah. Yeah, this could yeah. be that. It could be. This could yeah, be a it, high it, or a low. I really, like, we're so, it's like the ending of 2001. Like, right. I can't see, d- like, dimensions anymore. I can't see where 
where one thing begins and the other ends. So right, and, it, and it's definitely been at least fifteen minutes of just colors and and like yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Flat, flat I'm making that. I'm making that face, and then I see myself <laughs> like eating breakfast while old. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That whole yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> you got all of it. Yeah. Whew. All right. I think we should end this. I, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, we're you know, gonna, it's going to keep getting longer. Every episode is going to get longer. And that's the problem. The next. That's the problem. Is what are we going to do for five? It's going to be a four hour podcast, man. That's fine. It's going to be a real problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. It's uh, somebody. Like, <laughs> to, to quote. All right. Look. To quote Somebody's a famous, fired, right? to quote a famous uh, uh, movie, some somebody stop me. Yeah, <laughs> smoking, smoking. Just scale of, no, a scale just of one the, to ten. The, the stop. What? What do you what do you what do you give the odds Tom listens to this? Uh, oh, he's like, not gonna li- I, if I were Tom, I wouldn't listen to this. Are you kidding me? Just ever like he'll never know what we Tom, put in. Like okay, how much Tom? We if you're did. hearing this right now, first of all, we're not doing it for Tom. This is not, not for Tom. But Tom, no. if you're listening right now, nobody fucking say anything to Tom. You all, you're all in Don't on this. Don't fucking ruin it. Do not ruin it. Word. I swear to God, I'll find out who did it. We're going to um, give him five bucks, right? Here's five bucks, Tom. We'll give him five bucks. If you come to me and say, where's my $5? I listened all the way through your podcast. Yep. Um, but yep. seriously, I do not expect him to. I don't. No. I don't even want him to, unless that's how he finds his happiness. Uh, you know. But Jesus, he's not editing this. I'm editing it. He has what no he reason. Just, what if he just came to you tearfully and was like, "I'm just so glad you thought of me." You know what I mean? Like, what if it was like really meaningful for him that we thought of him at the end of this Twilight podcast? Happen. By the way, really? he's doing the intro. For oh, the podcast. Right. yeah. <laughs> you you will have heard Tom do the intro. Oh, great. That's so good. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. He's what gonna, a joy. Yeah. Yeah. What a joy. It's, this is all joy. And, and like you and I, it, like, you know, spoiler for the audience, but you and I are going to record episode three like this week. Yeah, we, we are. We're, this is all this is all happening. I'm going to start putting these out soon. I need to start editing them. Okay. Uh, and I mean, they don't need to hear this. They should. They don't need to hear they our should. plans for dropping an episode that they are currently listening to. Listen, this is how the sausage was made. This is the intestines part. You yeah, ate your sausage, now know what you ate. I, and then we put it out. <laughs> that's it. That's, the, that's it. It's done. You the sausage, that's how the sausage submarine. What do you Holy need? Shit. you want me to describe like what audacity you, looks like? You could Not have put good. a little drama it in it. good. We could have used the hero story in there, you know, like we could have used a protagonist and some choices and some obstacles, but no, you took all that out. There's no heroes here. <laughs> no, I agree. We're, you know, at the very least it's nor- morally neutral on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's gotta be enough. Adam, where, where can we find you? <laughs> Oh my god! I don't know. Like, Look, it's weird because forever? I don't. I'm not, I, I don't want to cue you up like you're my guest because we're sure. we're both complicit in this. But, I agree. But I but I say time. since we're on the Gamefully Unemployed Network, you start yeah, yeah. because then they'll hear yours and then they'll sure. be like, all right, that's enough of this. That's enough. I've had enough. Up. If although if they've got to uh, two hours and thirty plus minutes, I think that they're in for whatever we're going to give them. Yeah, you know what, guys? It, it could be an get, hour of snoring the plugs, after this. You're going to get a surprise. You better fucking sit through it. Ooh, yeah! I'm really you'll excited get a surprise. About that. Like this could really be like that that Wilco song where like there's just a 20 minute fucking migraine headache simulation at what, the end. I don't, I don't know anything about Wilco. I just told you. All you needed to do was hear it and be like, I "Yes, it you. could." I heard you. <laughs> but instead, you no butted the fucking bit. Just classic Dave. Just rejecting <laughs> the bit. Classic. I did, didn't I? <laughs> you I did. The bit. This is what you do. That's what I do. <laughs> Oh, I don't know anything oh, about Wilco. That's so good. Therefore, I quit on this joke. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I set you up so all you have to be is like, what yeah, it would have been oh, fun. You set me up me going, yeah? All right, let's do it again. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing it again. Fuck that. <sighs> all right, so look, here's where you can find me on the internet. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at The Real Gans. You can find my other podcasts on the One Upsmanship Network. I have three that I host, one called Director Peace with my buddy Abe, another called One Upsmanship with my buddy Swaim, and the third called I'll Show You Mine If You Show Me Yours with my buddy Maggie Mae Fish. They are about low high art uh, high art filmmaking and low art movies, video games, and being friends with media in that it. order. I love them all. 
Thank you very much. And you've been a guest on at least one of them. Probably. Maybe another one day. Maybe another one day. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's hard because, like, director piece, I don't want to be a guest because... Yeah, I understand. I yeah, want to... Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, the one with Maggie, though, I could see you easily squir- you squirming work, right in. Yeah, if you guys work out a system there. Um, yeah. I guess I should tell people about our Patreon. Patreon.com. Please do. Slash Gamefully Unemployed. That's what you're listening to this on. We have, if you go on the Patreon, you have exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Uh, did you share your Twitter? I did. Oh, okay. It's real Gans. Then I guess I'll share mine. It's at Movie Hooligan. It's beautiful. I never share my Twitter, but. I love uh, your Twitter. Aw. I love it's, it. It's oh, nothing right it. now. I've, I've just been retweeting stuff. Uh, I, I enjoy I enjoy your occasional outbursts of frustration and just that you're a generous liker. Thank you. Yeah, I like Wait, that. Wait, I'm a generous liker? Yeah, I think so. Anytime anybody uh, includes hear. anything, you're like, thank you. Here's a like. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's, that's good to know. I didn't know if I was liking too little. Oh, I'm no, glad you're good. I'm liking you're, good. That's, that you're... says a lot about the rest of you fuckers. That's like yeah. when I, I tip like a certain amount, and then when I learn someone's tipping less, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, I thought I was tipping I standard. Um, the other day, the other day, somebody shared a Twilight piece of news to you and I just to force us to do this podcast, and I was like, "I'm not liking that." And then you came I'll right like in, it. you swooped yeah, in, and like liked it. it. Yeah, yeah. So I told people there'd be a surprise if they sat through the plugs. Whew. Uh And I lied. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. Holy shit! That's it. Great suckers. <laughs> I guess fuck, fuck you for listening, I guess. I had uh, nothing planned. No, not <laughs> fuck you. I'm sure they had a great time. I'm just saying I lied. I sure. didn't I didn't have anything. Yeah, yeah. That's my what favorite. What would I have? What would I what did I can't give them something? I, I I really thought that when you came up there'd be more than your deck in your hand, but I guess I was no, wrong. I lied. I just lied. <laughs> I had nothing. I really enjoyed that. You know what's funny? I think this last forty minutes are my favorite of the podcast so far. <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. The ones where we didn't we, talk about Twilight. We we need to get into the nonsense way earlier, Dave. We yeah. just, I think we just need to use Twilight as a launching pad much earlier. Yeah. Much earlier. Ho, ho, ho.